Older person Sorensen is present. Older person Decker is present. Older persons Donahue, Ackley, and Feldy are online as well. All right. First order of business is a. Captain, I am done putting up with your bullying and harassment. You are not going to speak to me like a child. All you had to yeah. say, all you had to say, was, "Will you please move down the seat?" Yeah. Speak to me with respect. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your hands off of me, sir. Thank you. All right. First order of business is approval of the minutes from our last meeting on December 30th. Is there such motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. I move approval. Oh. Is there a second? Uh, All right. I'll second. All those in any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. First item on the agenda, 3.1, discussion of possible action regarding the request of um, alcohol beverage operating license application number 3461 for the Harbor Center Marina. City Attorney, do you want to start this one? Sure. I see uh, Mr. Bauer is here, so if you have any questions for him, uh, you can uh, ask them. Uh, technically, this uh, uh, licensee is now it just became uh, in violation of the continuation of business ordinance, but uh, they uh, applied for this before that happened, so we're good. Um, you are, under our ordinance, able to, for good sh cause shown, grant a one-time extension of the uh, license so that they're not in violation of that uh, continuation business ordinance. Just to give you a little bit of uh, uh, background, typically you've done that for 30, 60, 90 days. That's, that's been kind of typical. It could be longer. Uh, the most that you would be able to do here is about five and a half months, basically until the end of the licensing period uh, on June 30th. Um, and uh, what I would suggest is that um, you may want to ask uh, Mr. Bauer uh, on behalf of the licensee uh, sort of when when they will definitely be operating. Uh, you probably don't want to grant a period of time and then have it turn out that they're not going to be open by that time. So you want to find out about that and then determine whether you think that's reasonable. And if you, it is, you can grant it. And uh, if not, uh, you can have that uh, discussion as well. A uh, couple things that are uh, that can be taken into account. Um, uh, one thing that we often talk about in these situations is whether there are other people waiting for this or any other license. Um, there is actually one available license out there. It just became available. Um, so even if this one were to be postponed, there is one other one out there um, uh, available to be applied for. And we don't know at this point whether there's a lot of people clamoring for that because it just, just happened. We, we There is a list at the clerk's office. But as you know from previous times, a lot of times just because somebody's on the list doesn't mean they're actually actively trying to get on the get the license now. It usually means that they're interested in finding out so that if whatever they've got in the works is close enough, they can uh, deal with it. So that that is that is a relevant factor and is a little bit different than perhaps the last time we dealt with a couple of these. Uh, that that we'd have a little more flexibility right now uh, than than we other do than we have in the past. I'll kind of leave it there. Uh, you can ask Mr. Bauer any questions, or if you have any questions for me, I can answer them for Julie as, as well. Okay. Matt, do you have anything you want to add? Sure. Yeah, we when we got approval from the committee uh, mid-July, um, we just started the renovation period then. It took us a little longer. So uh, we're looking to extend it to about mid-March to early April. Um, April 1st is what we requested. Uh, this puts it, the opening day a little bit more in line with our opening of our boating season, which will guarantee the uh, more foot traffic down here and uh, better traffic and presence. Awesome. Um, Mary Lynn, I see you have a question. Um, uh, I guess, and I would ask for Chuck's guidance on this. Um, uh, it seems to me that if we, it would be sensible for us to extend this to the maximum time. I sincerely doubt that, um, well, 
certainly bars are opening and people are in them. Um, but uh, just to extend maximum flexibility um, on this particular site, um, I, I, it would be my intention to move to extend it to the end of the licensing period, unless you think that there is some, some reason not to do that. Attorney Adams? I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really up to you. Um, you know, if you extend it to June 30, that's entirely fine. If, if that's what you believe is the best, I, there's no reason, there's no legal reason not to do that. Yeah. Other um, uh, so committee members, uh, it, it's going to be my intention to move that. And I just think, um, you know, uh, <laughs> This is a really hard time to be opening a business. Um, and I think this just offers maximum flexibility and really um, at this point does not cause harm. So I'm going to move to extend this license to uh, June 30th, 2021. There's been a motion. Uh, I'll second. There's been a motion by Mary Lynn, second by Dean. Dean, you had a question? I just, not a really a question. I, I just, I concur completely. I think at, at this time with the the times the way we are in, uh, I think it's prudent to go through the maximum, just to give them the most flexibility. I mean, if they can open earlier, fine, then they can. But this way it gives them the full amount of time. All right, any other questions from anybody? Matt, you good with that? Yes, appreciate it, thank you. Awesome, all right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair, aye. Vote. Chair votes aye. That's been approved. Thanks, Matt. All right, moving along. 3.2 RO number 86, 2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 30th, 2020, June 30th, 2022. Taxi cab license application number 3387. City Attorney? Hey, this is, yes, we're here for a hearing. Uh, I can't see who's in the uh, council chambers. Is Cheyenne Lip present? There's some outside. Is, is, is... Does Cheyenne? Is it Cheyenne? I don't know who's out there. Pierce, she's not here. No. Nope. Oh. Okay. So we'll, we'll proceed without her, but that does make the uh, hearing somewhat more simple. Um, yeah. You can just simply uh, base it on uh, the information that's uh, adduced here. Um, I assume that uh, uh, Lieutenant Stelter is in the in the council chambers. So perhaps Lieutenant Stelter, if you could go to a mic, and, and I'll just ask you a few basic questions. Either way. Okay, I, his mic is not on, but yep, it's on. He's here. We're on. Oh, it's it on. Okay, it looked like it wasn't. Okay, um, so uh, Lieutenant Stelter, um, you're familiar with the uh, applicant on uh, taxi cab drivers license three three eight seven Cheyenne Lip. Yes. And uh, this is a new taxi cab drivers license application, not a renewal, correct? Correct. And uh, the recommendation of the uh, police department and really of staff was uh, to deny this license. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, uh, there were, um, it's, it's fair to say that there, there are really two bases uh, for denying the license. Uh, the record, her record of violations related to the license activity and her record as a habitual law offender. Is that correct? That is correct. So we're going to talk first of all about her record of violations related to the license activity. Um, and, and there's really two types of those uh, uh, of violations as well, correct? Those specific to driving and those related to drug trafficking concerns, is that correct? Yes. And why, why would concerns about drug trafficking um, uh, be a concern for a taxi cab driver's license applicant? 
Um, with my experience uh, as an investigator with the street crimes units, uh, supervising street crimes units, and as an investigator and supervisor with the Sheboygan County Drug Unit, otherwise known as the Multi-Jurisdictional Enforcement Group, um, we have targeted um, known drug dealers that were using taxi services to transport drugs while they conduct their daily work. Um, we've also received credible intelligence um, that drug dealers use the taxi cabs to move their product. Okay. And so specific to drug trafficking concerns, um, uh, Ms. Lip has uh, six uh, different misdemeanor or felony uh, uh, convictions that relate to those concerns. Is that correct? That's correct. So there's a 2015 misdemeanor possession of uh, drug paraphernalia from 2015 CM 71. Is that correct? Yes. And then there is a uh, 2016 felony possession with intent to deliver uh, from 2016 CF 21 that also came with a misdemeanor conviction for possession of drug paraphernalia, correct? Yes. There is also a 2016 uh, conviction in 2016 CF 69 for uh, misdemeanor possession of illegally obtained prescriptions as a party to uh, the crime. Is that correct? That is correct. And then in 2019, there were two uh, convictions, uh, or actually three, uh, so I counted wrong, um, that all came out of case 2019 CF 391, a misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia and two uh, uh, con counts of conviction for possession of cocaine. Is that correct? That is correct. And in addition, uh, she does remain on uh, probation on, the, on one of those um, convictions of misdemeanor uh, possession of cocaine. Is that correct? Yes. Specific to driving, there are an additional five convictions uh, of, of concern. Is that, is that fair to say? Yes. In order of age, so starting with the oldest first, uh, in 2011, uh, she was convicted of an operating while intoxicated, an open intoxicant in motor vehicle, absolute sobriety, and driving without a license. Is that correct? Yes. In 2015, in case number 2015, CM44, she was convicted of uh, OWI, or operating while intoxicated, related misdemeanor operating after revocation. Is that correct? Yes. In 2017, uh, in uh, 2017 TR 2686, she was convicted of speeding. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, in case 2017 CT 140, also in 2017, she was convicted of driving without a license, correct? Correct. And in a municipal court case from 2019, she was convicted of improper stop uh, at a sign. Is that correct? That is correct. Additionally, there are five other uh, criminal charges uh, that show her to be a habitual law violator. Is that correct? Yes. And in this case, you chose only to uh, consider um, criminal charges and not consider violations that are non-criminal for this particular um, uh, concern. Is that correct? That is correct. And these convictions are uh, three convictions for misdemeanor bail jumping out of a single case in 2015, a 2016 felony bail jumping, uh, a 2020 misdemeanor bail jumping as a repeater, a 2020 misdemeanor disorderly conduct with the use of dangerous weapon, and a 2020 misdemeanor battery. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, and so given all of those concerns, you are recommending that the uh, license be, uh, the license application be denied. Is that correct? Yes. No other questions. I'll leave it to the committee to make whatever motion they feel appropriate. All right. Based on that information, is there a motion to deny? Make motion to deny. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mary Lynn. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of denying the application based on the evidence, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. All right. Moving along. 4.1, hearing on 
Do we, Chuck, do we got to prove the remaining licenses on that, or are we good at that? We'll do that at the end, just because nobody else is waiting on that, and we might as well get Mr. Shelton's matter going. Okay. Okay. 4.1, hearing on the appeal of Chad Shelton's finding dogs to be dangerous, vicious animals pursuant to Section 18-47 I-2 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code. City Attorney, do you want to start this off, or Bill Adams, or someone sure. from the I'll, I'll just start it out with a, sort of an explanation of, of what's happening. Uh, so in this case, first of all, uh, as, as is our practice on um, these dangerous dog and vicious dog uh, matters, I am not representing the police department. I'm representing you uh, as the committee or as the council. Uh, and the police department has chosen to represent itself in presenting uh, this matter before you. Uh, my understanding is Mr. Shelton is also present in the council chambers and he is uh, representing himself with regard to uh, these uh, animals. Mr. Shelton has appealed um, the finding of the chief of police uh, that his dogs Cronus and Odysseus are uh, vicious and or dangerous. Uh, uh, if I recall correctly, Cronus is the one that was declared vicious and Odysseus was declared uh, dangerous. Uh, and I'm certain that as part of the, uh, the case, uh, there will be some testimony regarding that, but uh, that's just sort of the, the basic uh, uh, beginning of this. Um, this this uh, is an appeal uh, of the chief's determination. And so the chief's determination is considered an initial determination. The SPD um, and I believe Lieutenant Adams will be handling uh, this matter on behalf of the chief as the chief's designee. They'll present that initial determination and the reasoning for it uh, via testimony. Uh, and then after that, it will be Mr. Shelton's turn uh, to present his case as to uh, why he's appealing it and why he believes uh, you as a committee should overturn uh, that finding. The parties will be able to uh, present any evidence. Typically what we do is we'll have an opening statement from, uh, from the police department followed by an opening statement by uh, uh, Mr. Shelton and then we'll proceed with uh, the police department's case followed by Mr. Shelton's case followed by some closing statements by the parties if, if they wish. Um, in this case though Mr. Shelton uh, is appealing and so he does hold the burden of proof. Um, normally that would mean that he would present his evidence first but um, because we do need to have a presentation of you know what what the uh, charges that led to uh, the um, Hearing our, uh, we will have the police department go first uh, in this particular case, and Mr. Shelton will have the opportunity to uh, respond. Rules of evidence aren't in effect, so you know things that we deal with in court, like you know who's who's cross-examining and all those things, and what can come in at what time, they, they, they don't apply here. So there's no disadvantage to one or the other by doing it that way. Uh, committee should consider only uh, uh, relevant evidence in deciding whether the dog, uh, the respective dogs are either vicious uh, as defined in the ordinance or, or dangerous. Um, I can present to you uh, what the law is if you would like me to do that ahead of, uh, I'm, I'm seeing some nods. So uh, vicious dogs are considered vicious if they do any of the following. First, cause a serious injury to or kill a person or domestic animal. Second, cause an injury by biting a person in the face or neck. Third, attack a person in such manner as to require defensive action to prevent bodily injury or property damage when the person is conducting themselves peacefully, peacefully and lawfully on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog. Fourth, uh, if the dog attacked a person in such a manner as to result in property damage or an injury to the person when that person is uh, conducting themselves peacefully and lawfully on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog. And fifth, attack without provocation another animal or fowl on property other than that of the owner or attacking dog. It can also be considered vicious if the dog is owned, harbored, or trained primarily uh, or in part for the purpose of fighting if it has been previously found to be vicious in a trial on the charge of violating our vicious dog ordinance, or if it has been declared to be vicious in another municipality, county, or state. I don't think either of those three is in, in, uh, at issue today. 
respect to dangerous dogs, uh, which is a lower uh, standard uh, here, a dog is considered dangerous there, there are, if it did any of the following seven things. First, it caused injury to a person or a domestic animal less severe than a serious injury. Second, chased or attacked any human or domestic animal without provocation. Third, demonstrated an approach or an apparent attitude of attack towards any human or animal in a menacing fashion without provocation. Fourth, demonstrated a trait or characteristic or a generally known reputation for being dangerous. Fifth, demonstrated a known propensity, tendency, or disposition to attack or cause injury to or otherwise threaten the safety of humans or other domestic pets or animals without provocation. Sixth, demonstrated any other behavior which, consists, which constitutes a threat of bodily harm to a person when that person is conducting him or herself peacefully and lawfully. Uh, and seventh, if it has run at large three or more times in any 12-month period. It can also be considered dangerous if it's been declared dangerous by a court in a trial or if it's declared dangerous in another municipality, county, or state. And again, I don't think either of those is that issue here. A couple of things that you should also know about dangerous dogs, there are, even if it meets uh, those initial seven, uh, uh, one, one of those uh, seven uh, things that would need to meet, a dog cannot be considered dangerous despite those things solely because of its breed, solely because it's attacked or menaced a person or animal in order to defend its owner or caretaker or another person or animal, its young or its food from a trespasser or an attack, or solely because it attacked or menaced a person or animal in order to defend itself against a person or animal or a trespasser that has provoked, tormented, or abused it. Uh, there is also a provision uh, that won't really be in, 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 I don't think it's gonna be at issue here, um, dangerous, uh, a dog that's been declared to be dangerous uh, that it's it's for a three year period and it would have to be re-upped. So after three years, if it, it doesn't do anything uh, that evinces that it's uh, dangerous, that that is done in three years. There also can be it, it can be done after six months if the owner can prove that the dog and its owner have completed the Canine Good Citizen program sponsored by the American Kennel Club and provided evidence of that to the police department. So that's, that's kind of the law. I know there's a lot there. And um, again, you know, there, there'll be some opportunity after the, the police department and Mr. Shelton have made their cases uh, for questions uh, either, um, you know, of me, uh, you know, representing you or perhaps of the parties as well, uh, if need be. Uh, at this point, I think we're ready to proceed unless any of the members of the committee have questions about procedure before we begin. Any initial questions for City Attorney Adams? All right, we'll head it over to the PD for their opening statements. Oh, turn that on for you. Well, you now it is. Yep, you're good. I don't have to do anything? It's on, yep. All right, bear with me. I think I have to share my screen. Hey, Micah, can you come here and help me a second? It's not sharing it the way I expected. Right, but I, I thought it would fill the... And Alt-Tab doesn't seem to work when I'm in this mode. Oh, there you go. Hey, you get everything. Okay, did it go to the presentation? Okay. All right, this method is a little new to me. I uh, appreciate the time of the committee. I wanna just give a little quick context to today's hearing. Cronus was first declared dangerous on March 4th, 2019. Is there anything I need to do about that echo? He was then declared vicious on March 20th, 2020. Mr. Shelton appealed that vicious declaration and this committee listened to testimony last April 29. At that hearing, Mr. Shelton testified that the most serious dog bite under consideration was actually caused by a different dog, Persephone. 
As a result, Chief Domogolski moved to rescind the vicious dog declaration on Kronos and revert him back to the dangerous dog designation. And this information was communicated clearly to Mr. Shelton by Chief Domogolski, as well as Attorney Adams at that hearing. I would add that the difficulty in identifying the correct responsible dog in that case was a direct result of Mr. Shelton's complete failure to cooperate with the investigation. Cronus was again declared vicious on November 3, 2020, and Odysseus was declared dangerous that same day, November 3, 2020. Mike, if you want to give the first four exhibits, I have the vicious dog declaration for Kronos, the dangerous dog declaration for Odysseus, the return of unclaimed certified mail, and Mr. Shelton's letter appealing the dangerous and vicious dog declarations, just so you can see them. So this is the, dec the declaration for Kronos, for Odysseus. Now we're required to serve that by certified mail, which went out November 4th. Mr. Shelton refused to accept that mail, uh, refused to go to the post office to pick it up. We attempted personal service at his door, which is also acceptable on multiple occasions, and he refused to answer the door. Finally, Officer Hubrix posted the notice to Mr. Shelton's door on November 27th, and we were able to confirm by phone that Mr. Shelton had in fact received it on December 8th. We received his request for appeal on December 24th. So I, I believe being very generous, he did just meet the 30-day requirement. So we then sent him notice of this hearing and he is here today. Now the justification for declaring Cronus as a vicious dog is this. July 28, 2015, Cronus bit Edward Fighter, causing serious injury. December 2nd, 2018, Cronus bit Joseph Winkler, causing serious injury. December 15th, 2018, Cronus again bit Joseph Winkler, requiring him to take defensive action to prevent bodily injury. The bite did cause property damage to his jacket. March 2nd, 2019, Cronus bit Alyssa Urata, causing injury and requiring her to take defensive action to prevent further bodily injury. September 30, 2020, Cronus chased Ladarius Wimberly down the street in an aggressive manner without provocation, demonstrating an apparent attitude of attack. The justification for declaring Odysseus as dangerous is this. September 9, 2020, Odysseus chased Ladarius Wimberly down the street in an aggressive manner without provocation, demonstrating an apparent attitude of attack. July 30, 2020, Mr. Shelton threatened to sick his dogs, which included Kronos and Odysseus, on two people attempting to leave the upper apartment of his residence. They could hear the dogs barking and believed they had a disposition to attack. You will hear testimony from Mr. Shelton's neighbors of additional aggressive acts by his dogs that were not reported to the police. In addition to all of this, Cronus has been declared dangerous for nearly two years, but Mr. Shelton has still not complied with the requirements of the dangerous dog ordinance. For these reasons, I would ask that you uphold the police department's decision to declare Cronus as vicious and Odysseus as dangerous. That's it for my opening statement. This is all a complete waste of everyone's time and taxpayer dollars. Chief Domogowski is not a trained animal ex expert in any capacity. He does not have training in dog behavioralism, dog training, nor dog rehabilitation. It's funny that one of the requirements for being able to have your dog not deemed dangerous is to have them complete the canine good citizenship test because I am one of the few people in Sheboygan County authorized by the American Kennel Club to, pro, to uh, <clears throat> put a dog through the Canine Good Citizenship Test and certify them as CGC compliant. I have given out uh, several CGC certifications to dogs that I have trained through the AKC, and I only didn't do it for my own dogs, which are obviously CGC compliant, because I felt like that was a bit conceited to just go ahead and issue my dog's certifications. But that was well within my purview to do. My dogs have been, uh, 
trained to the standards of CGC, I have brought them here today so that everybody can both see for their own eyes and, if you're willing, come up and meet my dogs and see that they are not dangerous. I have several officers who have entered my home and interacted with my dogs, including Officer Inger, who, although the police department would never allow him to testify on my behalf, has many times interacted with me and my dogs and confirmed that they are not dangerous or vicious in any way. I also have video of Officer Hubrix, who is here, interacting with both of my dogs at once, off leash, no muzzles, no protective training devices whatsoever, freely interacting with them in my hallway, in full uniform, and, and nothing about his uh, demeanor showed that he was scared. I asked him several times if he felt threatened. His response was, no, not with you here. I'm sorry, but a dangerous or vicious dog would need to be physically controlled in order to keep them safe, even with the owner there. They're not just gonna all of a sudden not be dangerous because the owner is there. They will be dangerous or vicious at all times if they are dangerous or vicious. The police department sadly lacks training when it comes to canines. And unfortunately that leads to a lot of bad decisions on their part. I wish, Cronus, I said sit. I wish that they had the kind of expert, expert training that they need to be able to make these determinations. I wish that they had a canine expert on their staff to be able to come and evaluate dogs and make these determinations so that we didn't have to waste all of your time today and taxpayer dollars trying to figure out whether a puppy who's too dumb to know how to bite and a dog who's too well trained to ever bite anyone is dangerous or vicious. That's all. All right, thank you. All right, now we'll go to the presentation uh, component. Mr. Shelton, if you'd like to stay at the podium, I have some questions for you first, please. And we shouldn't swear in witness, any witnesses. We should or shouldn't? No. We should. Okay, so swear him in right now? Yes. All right, Mr. Shelton, I'm swearing you in as a witness. Can you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? Do you swear to tell the whole truth? The truth, the whole truth, so help you God. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. There you go, close enough. Thank you. We'll get it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Shelton, I understand you're the property manager of 1026 Swift Avenue, is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you own the property? Uh, it's a rent to own arrangement with uh, the property owner. Okay, you don't currently I own I don't it, currently so. have the title, no. Okay. My understanding is you live in the lower and tenants generally live in the upper? Correct. Okay. How many dogs do you own? Three. Three. Okay. Um, I have items six through nine that I would like to present. They're photos of your dogs from, from last year. So uh, the, Correct me if these are not correct. What is the name of, is this one of your dogs? Yes, sir. What's this dog's name? Irene. Irene. Do you still own Irene? I do. Okay. And number seven? That is Rhea. Rhea. Do you own Rhea still? I do not. You do not. Okay. And this dog? Cronus. That's Cronus who's right behind you there? That is Cronus who is right here. And finally? Odysseus. Odysseus. Okay, so Rhea is no longer owned the other three, and there's no other dogs. Correct. Are the three dogs that you have, are they currently licensed? They are not. Okay. Cronus was declared dangerous March 4th, 2019. Is he registered with the police department as a dangerous dog? He is not. Okay. What I'd like to do now, I understand as the property manager, you have some rules for your tenants that are, they're supposed to follow with respect to your dogs? Yes, sir. And we actually heard this, if I can get there, at the meeting last year, and I'm just gonna play a short excerpt from that. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
Uh oh. How do I turn it back on? <laughs> I'll need I'll need volume for a couple of things here. I need like full time IT support, you know this, Micah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, can I do it right up here? Yeah, you can, but otherwise it's right here. So. Right there. So if I just toggle that on yep, and off. Just do it when you're done. Okay. And, oh, oh. I don't know what happened. I think it went back. Well, we can hear it. <coughs> That's not the right one. Yeah. Why back on you? I can just open it from the slideshow again. Yeah, so. Okay. Lee called 911. Someone was on the phone on 911. That has a pretty severe injury. And so you would identify that what's been marked as as item 11 as Deborah Barry's leg. Yes. Yeah. And you would say that that's a serious injury. Serious. And so you would identify that what's been marked as as item 11 as Deborah Berry's leg. Yes. Yeah. And you would say that that's a serious injury. It's serious enough. Can can you describe to me um, essentially um, the exit of how people who were the tenants in the upper would get out of your residence? They come down the stairs and through the back hall. And so there's a common hallway there. It's a common hallway. Do you have any rules for them about when they can exit their residence and when they can't? Yes. Yeah, tell made, me about that. We have made it very clear to them that if they see the back door open, that we likely have the dogs out and that they just need to holler and let us know that they need to get through and we bring the dogs in. So if, if somebody walks out of that back door on the second level, can, can they see from there whether the dogs are, are in or out? Yes. So if the dogs are at the bottom of the stairway there, they, they can see clearly that the dogs are there. They would know. Yes. At all times. Yes. In fact, they've lived there for over a year, and this is the only incident that happened because they did not follow the instructions. There we go. Mr. Shelton, are those rules still in place? Uh, no. They're not? No. Okay. Uh, is there any reason you changed those rules? Yes, because I built a fence. 
Okay, but this, these were rules for the interaction of people inside the house, were they not? No. Okay. They were, so, they were rules so that they could exit the house in order to cross through the yard and not have to feel frightened because they have made it clear that they are scared of dogs in general. And I have done things to accommodate them so that they don't have to interact with the dogs. Okay. The context of that conversation was the injury to Deborah Berry. Yes. And who was injured where? In the hallway. Uh, yeah, on the stairwell, correct? I wouldn't okay. know. I was in bed with Cronus at the time, as I have told you guys many times. Is this the incident where you grabbed a towel and assisted her? You applied pressure to the wound? Yes, sir. Okay, where was she when you did that? She was sitting on the stairs. Okay. All right. So these rules would not have helped her anyway? What do you mean? Well, of you course, said you... Of course they would have. The interaction was described to me as she came bombing down the stairs, drunk at some time in the morning, opened the door at the same time that my wife was coming through with Persephone, and instead of shutting the door, turned around screaming and got bit. Okay. And it was a result of not following the rules, you believe? It, it was a result of not checking to see if the door was open before just coming out into the hall. Okay. Did, did those rules apply to all of your dogs or did, you, did it only apply to certain dogs that perhaps were more dangerous? As I have informed the police department on many occasions, my profession before I came down with stage four metastatic colon cancer was as a dog trainer, specifically dog evaluation and rehabilitation of aggressive dogs. I have had many aggressive dogs in my home throughout the years in order to try and help the citizens of Sheboygan County by rehabilitating the dogs that have otherwise shown aggression, bitten, etc. I have done dozens of rehabilitations here in Sheboygan County. I have kept more people safe than I can imagine. So my, my had, question is... I had an aggressive dog in my home at that time, Persephone. As I have informed you guys many times, Persephone was a tough nut to crack. And I was trying my hardest to save that dog's life. And in order to try and keep her and other people from interacting I had rules in order to make sure that nobody got hurt. So my question is, did those rules apply to only when Persephone was outside or to all the dogs? In order to not make people who don't own my dogs try to know which dogs are which, it just applied to any of the dogs so that they didn't have to sit there and try and identify my dogs. But no, the rules were to keep people safe from the dog who was aggressive. And were the, are the tenants supposed to check before they exit their apartment, the apartment door, or which door are they supposed to check? At the bottom of the stairs, if they open the door and see that the door is open, all they have to do is say, hey, we're trying to get through, and then we would have taken the dogs in. Instead of opening the door and seeing that the door was open, she just came bombing out. Okay. I can see if I can play another video here, so you might want to mute me. Is that your upper apartment? Yes, sir. Okay.
so you can see when you exit the upper apartment, you go down a few stairs, you make a 90 degree turn, go down further. Then there's another door that opens into a common foyer area. Is that the door they're supposed to check? At the bottom before? of the stairs there, when you open the door, you can see whether or not the back door is open. Okay. And what we're looking at right now is the door to your apartment, correct? Yes. Okay. This video is from that very day when the officers were trying to ascertain the identity of which dog was involved in this bite. And so I'm just going to play the remainder of this. You can turn this off. I'm sorry, is there a purpose to showing me half naked? So the reason I showed that video, the officers were investigating a very serious dog bite and required that we know which dog bit Deborah Berry so that we could get the proper quarantine done. And this is indicative of the type of cooperation we frequently get when we're investigating incidents with Mr. Shelton's dogs. In the video, he I'm denies sorry, did that I not his dogs... answer her questions sir, I'll, and I'll say that question I was shortly. asleep and did not know what happened? What further cooperation do you want from someone who doesn't have any information? I told her exactly what I knew. I was asleep in my bed with Cronus. By the time I woke up, all of the dogs were inside the house. That is all I knew. Okay, Mr. There Sheldon, was nothing I'll, more you can speak that later when you give your presentation. I'll ask a question, then you can answer. Otherwise, just wait for your statement at the if end. If you're going to try and paint me in an uncooperative light, then we're going to tell the truth about how I told her everything that I knew. So you heard, I'll let the video speak for itself, what he told her, implying that uh, none of his dogs were likely involved. It wasn't until the hearing here that he claimed that Persephone was involved, and that is why we reversed the um, vicious dog declaration at that time. Um, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Shelton was issued two citations for refusing to comply with a quarantine order, and he, in fact, was found guilty of those. These would be items 12 and 13. Mr. Shelton, you can sit down. I, the next witness I'd like to call is Lisa Merrick from the Sheboygan County Humane Society. All right. 
right. Please raise your right hand. And then please state your name. Lisa Marek. All right. Do you sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Can you tell us what your role is at the Humane Society? Sure. I'm the operations manager. Okay. In that capacity, are you familiar with a black cane corso dog named Kronos belonging to Chad Shelton, which is actually right behind you? I am. Okay. Um, how, now, the Humane Society housed him for a period of time last year, correct? Correct. Can you tell us when? It was April 16th through May 6th. Of okay. 2020. Now, I understand that you, you personally own some large Mastiffs or, or large dogs. I do. English so you, Mastiffs, okay. two of them. <laughs> I'm not an expert, but you're, you're not intimidated by large dogs. Right. Okay. That being said, did Cronus present any challenges to you or your staff while you were housing him? He did. He was very uh, aggressive in the kennel. Uh, my staff was not able to bring him in and out. He was growling, baring teeth, and um, we had to make special accommodations to be able to bring him in and out so he could get outside. Okay, like what were some of the safety measures you had to take? Uh, I had about three to four staff. Uh, they would be behind gates uh, because we weren't able to leash him. We had to set up different barriers throughout our hallways to be able to guide him outside into a gated kennel. Okay. Was he allowed to be with any other dogs? No. And why is that? We were just holding him. So it was, he wasn't our property, so we weren't going to put him with any other dogs. Did you have concerns of the safety of other dogs? Should he be with them? He was generally outside by himself when we would do our little um, path through the shelter. So okay. he was by himself so no in an outdoor run. Okay. In your opinion, does Kronos present a danger to the neighborhood where he lives? I wouldn't trust him uh, as in the shelter capacity. Uh, he would not be an adoption candidate. He would not be an adoption candidate. Correct. And why is that? Uh, unpredictable. And in a dangerous way, is that what that means? Yes. Okay. A liability for us if we would adopt him out. Is it safe to say that your job um, has you working with dogs in a professional capacity? Yes. Okay. Those are all the questions I have for you. Um, I'm not sure if Chuck can give guidance. I'd like some of my witnesses to be able to leave if they're done. So I don't know if Chad needs to be able to ask her questions rather than wait for the end. Right, so in Mr. Shelton's case, since he'll present his testimony later, we'll, we'll give him the opportunity to do that, but he should be able to cross-examine your witnesses now. Okay, would you like to ask her any questions? Should. Should Mr. Shelton ask them from where I'm standing? You can ask them from any microphone. I don't know if there are, are there other microphones that he... <laughs> Otherwise, you can just come right here. That's fine. You'll have to forgive me. Your name was Lisa what? Marek. Mars? Marek. Marek, okay. And uh, Lisa, as I am unfamiliar with you, I'm just gonna ask you some questions. I don't mean to offend you in any way. I'm just trying to ascertain what your expertise is. What formal training do you have in dog behavioralism or training? I do not. Zero years of training in either evaluating a dog for behavioral issues or in training a dog that has behavioral issues. Right. I have 10, 15 years of working in shelter okay. and working with different uh, training groups I, that have come in to help I, I, I want to be clear that I applaud you for working with dogs and everything that, you're done, that you've done, and I have no disagreement with the fact that experience can be a powerful teacher. However, without the formal professional education on dog behavioralism, you would agree 
that you are not an expert in dog behavioralism, yes? Correct. Okay. So that being said, your opinion that you would not trust Cronus is effectively an amateur opinion. They were at my observations. They're your observations as an amateur. Whereas, although I applaud you for your years of experience in the shelter, I have 15 years of training and experience as a dog evaluator and as a dog trainer. So I happen to know something about dogs when they're put into kennels after being ripped away from their owners. Perhaps in your years of working at the kennel, you have also experienced dogs who are nervous, dogs who are scared, and therefore dogs who exhibit behaviors that you might read as aggressive in the untrained eye, but are actually the dog telling you that they are terrified, that they don't know what's going on. Would you agree that it is possible that Cronus was scared? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not all dogs react that way, though, either, when they're no, scared. No, not all dogs react that way. <clears throat> Every dog is a different case. Mm -hmm. I know because I have evaluated and rehabilitated dozens of dogs, and I am happy to let the owners know that most of the time what you think is aggression is simply behavioral issues that can be easily corrected. And I would say that for someone who is not trained in how to properly rehabilitate a dog, that it is very easy to confuse behaviors as aggression when it is merely an easily correctable uh, matter of the situation, i.e. being scared in the kennel and needing to be comforted, or, you know, uh, other behavioral issues such as maybe they're a bit dominant. You know, in any case, these can be read as aggression when in fact they're not. Now I will ask you one other thing, Mrs. Merrick, uh, or Miss Merrick, I don't mean to offend. Uh, were you or were you not offered the ability to have myself and my wife come and help with Cronus? Yes, and I... You were. And <clears throat> what was your response to that offer for help? While you were screaming at me over no, I the was not. phone? No, uh, I was not. And had, trying to have a conversation no, with you? No, I was you. not screaming at you I until said, after Melissa, your okay, response. One at a time, please. Let her answer. I said Melissa was more than welcome to come onto our property. Right. Your hostility was not welcome. I did not display on our any property. hostility or let, raise my voice at let, all. Please let her finish. Until you after you told me that only Melissa would. Please let her finish. Mr. Shelton, please let her finish. She's a witness right now. She's answering your questions. Your time for the your time your time for the presentation is after. You may resume your answering the question. Uh, uh, so that conversation was ended with you because I did ask that Melissa can't come in if she would be able to, but your demeanor was not welcome in our shelter. And as you told me, that was based on a conversation that you had with the police, having never spoken to me prior. I talked to you on the phone. When we talked on the phone, the only question was, can Melissa come in? And I said, yes, me and my wife will come in. To which your immediate response was, Melissa is welcome. You are not welcome on the property. There was not a chance for any hostility or raised voices prior to that. Therefore, as you told me on the phone conversation, all of your decision was based on a conversation that you had with the police department, not based on any conversation that you had with me, not based on any interaction that you had with me. You refused help for a dog in your care based on a conversation that you had with the police department. Is that or is that not true? That's not true. 
when I asked for Melissa, you wouldn't let me talk to Melissa, and that's how that happened. You said, is Melissa there? I said, yes, she is right here with me. You are on speakerphone. That was my response. And I said, Melissa can come in. And I said, we will be in. And you weren't welcome, I said. So, so how was that, was how was that based on anything that happened in that conversation? You, you're not an easy person to talk to. So that's why Melissa so was able to... So this dog deserved to go without proper care for three weeks because I'm not an easy person to talk to. I, I'll acquiesce to that. I'm not an easy person to talk to. But you would refuse help for a dog that you have in your care for almost a month because someone is not easy to talk to. I didn't refuse help. I asked if Melissa would come in. You did refuse help. I said, we will come in, and you said, you are not welcome to. I said, either we're both coming in, or neither of us are. And you said, then neither of you are welcome. And if either of you show up, we will call the police. Those were your exact words. I offered, so no, I wasn't. You, you offered, and then quickly rescinded, and said that even if Melissa showed up alone, that you would call the police. And don't worry, Melissa will be testifying later as to what happened, unless you'd like to cop to it right now. She can testify. Excellent. Then I have no further questions. Thank you. The next person I'd like to call is Edward Fider. He's actually join, uh, joining us remotely. Mike, I think, is there any way I can get him to be up there? I'm not sure I want to monkey around with this thing. Mr. Fider, are you online at all? Mike, you want to raise Kendra, see if she's... Oh, there we go. Hey, Mr. Fighter, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, I'm going to swear you in as a witness. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, my God. All right. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Fighter. I appreciate you participating today. I called you because... I understand you were the victim of a dog bite in July of 2015 while living at 1506 South 13th Street. Is that correct? That's correct. Was that your residence at the time? Yes. My understanding is that you lived in the upper apartment and Chad Shelton lived in the lower. Is that correct? That's correct. How long did you live there with Mr. Shelton? A couple of years. Before then, I lived there 30, 37 years before Shelton moved in. Okay. Would you please describe the dog bite incident that occurred on July 28, 2015? Yeah, that was, uh, it was early in the morning around 7 o'clock or something like that. And I walked outside to go to my car, and uh, Melissa was in the backyard. She had a dog on a leash, and there were two other dogs. Uh, Cronus, I think that was the big black one, but the other dog was a tan-colored dog. That one was the name I didn't get to know. Well, anyway, when they, the two dogs spotted me, coming through the backyard, Cronus, he took off running and while the other one followed and Cronus jumped up and bit, bit me in, in the back of the arm. But the other one also jumped up. But that one didn't bite me. So and then I went upstairs and, and she got a hold of the dogs and took them in the house. And my daughter took me to the emergency room 
for dog bite. What were your injuries as a result of that bite? I had a couple of stitches in the arm. And you were treated at the hospital for that? Pardon me? Were you treated at the hospital for that? Yes, yes, I was. Was that the only time Mr. Shelton's dogs ever behaved aggressively? Well, I think they were a little more cautious after that, but he had the trouble of sometimes letting the dogs run loose in the back. I never knew when they were out there. We had a tree in the backyard. I couldn't always tell that the dogs were further in the backyard or not. So I'd come downstairs and I was very cautious every time I came down. So, so it sounds like Mr. Shelton, I'm sorry, Mr. Shelton's dogs caused you some level of fear while you were living there? Oh yeah, that was the reason we moved. That was the reason you moved? Yes. Okay. There were a couple other reasons, but I don't want to get into that. I guess one last question. Did you do anything to provoke the dogs to attack you? No, I was just coming around from the back. My, my doorway was on, on the north side of the building, and Sheldon's was on the south side. And they were in the backyard, and I couldn't, I didn't see the dogs right away until I got partway to Sheldon's side of the house where the sidewalk was. And that's when the dogs spotted me. And that's when the black one, I think his name was Cronus. And uh, he was the first one that got to me. And uh, Melissa happened to. She hollered, but by then it was too late already. But she finally got the dogs away from me, and I went upstairs. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fighter. Mr. Shelton, do you have any questions okay. for Mr. Fighter? Okay. Mr. Fighter, if you would just stay connected, Mr. Shelton has some questions for you. Okay. Mr. Feigert, you testified um, both today and when giving your report to the police that both of the dogs came at you and that they both jumped up by you and that you had been bitten. However, uh, I ask you, is it at all possible that in the chaos and confusion of two dogs coming at you and jumping up on you, that you were unaware of which one actually bit you and are only assuming that it was the large yeah, dog Cronus when it, could, when it could have easily been Rhea as well. No, it was Cronus because Cronus was the first dog that got to me. That's where a bite occurred. And yet in the report, got, in the report you said that both of the dogs jumped at, up at you and you got bit, not that Cronus jumped up at you first and you got bit. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, you don't twist things around here. Cronus was the first one that got to me. The other one was following. Yes, they both ended up jumping on me, but Cronus was the one that bit me. But that's not what you said in your report. In your report, you said both dogs jumped up at you and you got bit. Cronus got to me first. All right, fair enough. Mr. Fighter, thank you. I appreciate your time. Kendra, you can disconnect. I would next like to call Officer Hubrix. All right, please state your name. <clears throat> Officer Kent Hubrix. All right, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. All right, please proceed. Officer Hubrix, did you investigate Mr. Fighter's dog bite complaint? Yes, I did back in July of 2015. Did you identify Mr. Shelton as the owner of the dog that bit Mr. Fighter? Yes, I did. Did you identify the dog that bit Mr. Fighter? 
Yes, Mr. Shelton um, initially said that the other dog was gone. Uh, eventually, after talking to him several times, I was able, he was able to admit to me that Kronos was the other dog in question. So, so there were three dogs involved in this incident, correct? Correct. And, and Mr. Shelton gave you the identity of two dogs? Yes. Which dogs were those? Rhea and Irene. Rhea and Irene, okay. And then he said the third dog was at a friend's house somewhere else and he did not disclose what dog that was? Correct, he initially did not. Okay. Eventually he told you though that that dog was in fact Kronos? Yes. Okay. When you told Mr. Shelton that you were going to issue him a quarantine form for Kronos, what did he tell you? Well, he was adamant that Rhea was the one that bit Mr. Fighter. Um, I talked to Mr. Fighter three times on that day. Mr. Fighter was adamant that the dog that bit him was the large black dog, identified as Kronos. Um, I told Mr. Sheldon that if he wouldn't produce the other dog, that I may have to quarantine both Rhea and Kronos. Um, eventually, Mr. Sheldon conceded to quarantining only uh, Kronos. Okay, so Kronos is the dog that Mr. Shelton quarantined. quarantined. Yes. And I would um, introduce item number 14, which is in fact the quarantine form and return, which was done on Kronos. He was examined at the animal clinic. Mr. Shelton, do you have questions for Officer Hubricks? I do. I am currently having an anxiety attack because of the presence of a person who has made threats against my physical body and life, and the police are refusing to do anything about it. It's not accurate. Then what are you proposing to do about it? I don't care. Would it I am having an anxiety attack. I do not feel comfortable. I do not feel safe. I do not feel as though you guys have done anything to protect me or enforce the law in regards to somebody making threats against my personal safety. And to have them here today is an insult. And I feel that it is just more of the harassment that your department is putting me through. I have told you and your officers several times that this man's presence is making me anxious, nervous, and scared for my life. And all you have told me is, oh, we're here to protect you. Well, I'm sorry. But as I told the police and fire commission, I don't trust you to protect me. My wife and I have said that we would not even call 911 if someone was breaking into our house because that's how little we trust you to Mr. Protect. Shelton, which person are you talking about? One of my neighbors who has entered my property, threatened to bash my head in, threatened to beat my ass, threatened to kill me. Is he in this room right now? Is he in this room right now? He's not in this room. Okay. He, he will be called to testify if we ensure that he is only in here during the time that he testifies. Would that satisfy you? I, I am experiencing a panic attack just from having seen him. Could, could we have him go down to a different floor for the time being then? Would you like a five minute break or? I, I need to breathe. Okay. okay. Do you guys mind just going down one level? Thanks. Would it be easier when you ask questions of Mr. Uh, sorry, Officer Hubricks, if he comes over here and you can just use that podium? If that would be it might okay, be simpler. I, I don't want to ask for, I'm not asking for special treatment, but when a man threatens your life, that is not something that is taken lightly. I would like to apologize. It's okay. I've been through a lot. And I would like to conduct myself better than that. Officer Hubrix, you and I have interacted multiple times in the course of your duty as a police officer for the Sheboygan Police Department, yes? Yes. 
In those times, have you ever had cause to interact with my dogs? Yes, actually the first time was this past Saturday. Oh, that was the first time I've ever introduced you to my dog? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Um, in your interaction with my dogs, was there a single moment where you were nervous or scared or felt that they were dangerous in any way? Well, I would say that one point that I felt a little nervous is when you left me in the hall with the dogs. I was not nervous of Odysseus, but Kronos pretty much ignored me during that time period. So Him you ignoring present, you made you nervous? I, I, I'm not trying to offend you. I just No, just a little bit when you left to go get the paperwork you wanted to show me. He was kind of ignoring me and just staring at the back door. Sure. Where Odysseus was wanting attention from me. Sure. And, and, you know, again, he didn't make any aggressive motions. He didn't growl. No. He didn't do anything. He just ignored you. Correct. And I was gone leaving you alone with my dogs for Two or a, three couple, minutes. a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you were interacting with both of my dogs, both without any controlling devices such as electronic collars, prong collars, you know, any muzzle. They, they were free, off leash, unmuzzled, yes. interacting with you. So if they were dangerous or vicious, they could have attacked you. Right? There was nothing restraining my dogs from attacking. Correct. There's nothing restraining them other than your presence when you were there. Uh, on which you just testified that there was several minutes where my presence was not there. Yes. And so there was nothing stopping my dogs from attacking you. Correct. And yet your testimony is that Odysseus sought attention and Cronus ignored you. Yes. Do those sound like the actions of aggressive, dangerous, and vicious dogs? Not at that time, they weren't, no. Would you agree that a dangerous dog is dangerous all of the time? Because as Lisa Merrick just testified, a dangerous dog would be unpredictable. Therefore, you would never know if they were safe at any given time. You want me to, uh, I can answer you right now. Like we had talked through that day, I felt completely comfortable while you were in the presence of the dogs. Um, right, and as we discussed that day, your level of knowledge of dogs extends to having owned dogs. Correct. You have no formal training. Correct. And as far as you're aware, none of the superior officers have any formal training either. We do Neither have... Lieutenant Adams, nope. nor Chief Domogowski, nor Captain Wieser has ever completed an animal behavioral course, a dog training course, or had any kind of formalized training when it comes to dogs whatsoever. I do not know the level of their training. I cannot testify to their Do training. you know that they have training? I do not. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. This is you in this video interacting with my dogs. Well, I was quite upset with you at the time. Yes. So, Mr. Shelton, do you have any more questions for him? Or you can save this video for your presentation. I can save the video for my presentation. Yep, you still have a presentation. This is I, just, I just wanted him to confirm that it was him. Okay. But, but, yeah, if it's a question, go for it. Yeah, I, that, that's all. I just, I just okay. want him to confirm that it is him. Can you confirm with us as well? Okay. Can, can we see the... Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you. 
Officer Hubrix, was the conclusion of your investigation that Kronos was involved in an unprovoked attack causing serious injury to Mr. Fighter? Yes. Thank you. I would next like to call Joseph Winkler. Do you, um, yeah, can we, can we move Kronos to a different location so Mr. Winkler is not feeling? Or he, if he wants to go back with the staff area, that's fine too, if he wants to use one of those mics. Yeah, actually, you know what, I think, or I could switch spots. Sure. Why don't you just stand right here? Or if you want to sit up here, Bill, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you'll want to swear him in, though. Right. Uh, will you please state your name and raise your right hand? Uh, Joe Winkler. All right. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yeah. All right. Please proceed. Mr. Winkler, thank you for coming today. I called you because my understanding is you were the victim of two dog bite attacks in December of 2018 while residing at 1026A Swift Avenue. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that your residence at the time? Yeah, I was living at the upper of the... You lived in the upper. Mr. Shelton lived in the lower. Mm -hmm. How long did you live there? Um, I believe from August to December. Of 2018? Of 2018, yep. Okay. Would you just describe for us the two dog bite incidents that happened in that December? Sure. Um, so the first one, I was coming back from work. I parked on the street. I was heading towards the uh, back door. And I was about halfway um, to the corner where you turn and, you know, you go in the door. And uh, then I seen the dogs, and I believe it was the brownish one, came at me and latched on my arm, jumped at me, and I blocked it. Um, and then, um, you know, it kind of, it was, I don't want to say, like, dragging me. Like, my feet were still, like, I, st I still had some balance, but... Uh, no, I kind of, it kind of like pulled me to the uh, back door then and then finally unlatched. And and then the second one, um, the second one, I was, I believe I was coming out the door. So I was, in, I was upstairs coming down the stairs. I walked out the door and then the dog was there and uh, it didn't bite my arm that time. It just got a hold of my jacket, but uh, I kicked it off and yeah. The first dog bite, did that cause you injury? Yeah. Um, I had to go to the ER, um, and uh, I, I don't remember exactly what the uh, amount was, but uh, it was more than $2,500 in medical bills. So, Did you have to get stitches? Uh, I think I just got glue, I believe. Glue? Okay. Yeah. And the second incident, if I understand it, didn't cause injury, but it tore your jacket? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. All right, Mike, I have a photo of the torn jacket. Can you just confirm if that's in fact? Sure. Yeah, that's my jacket. So tell me again which dogs you believe were involved in this? Which dogs? Yeah. These two, but that's the one that bit me. The Odysseus, the brown, the brindle dog is the one you believe bit you? I, I believe so. I mean, okay. it was two years ago. Um, I mean, they were both outside when it happened. Um, the other one was kind of like following me when I was getting um, pulled. But uh, yeah, I believe it was the brownish one both times. Okay, the, the report indicates that it was a black dog that bit you. Is I mean, that could be that could be it. Okay. Like I said, it was two years You're ago. You're not totally certain right now, though. Well, yeah. I mean, I just remember it happening, and then. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's totally fine. Right. It's, you know, I want you to say exactly what you remember. Um, what I would like to introduce now is item 15, which is a quarantine form and its return. Oh, you got that? The quarantine form? Okay, which was completed on Kronos, and yep. that is the only quarantine form that Mr. Shelton completed. Did Mr. Shelton offer any explanation as to why 
the dog might have bit you or latched on you? Um, yeah, I was like, um, I believe you said in, uh, in like their training, if you like lift your arm, um, they use it as like a target, I guess. Um, so, so did you ra raise your arm in a, like you were going to attack or in a defensive? No, like the dog jumped at me and I went like this to block it from, you know, biting my face or maybe with right here, I think. And he told you that his dogs were trained to attack that sort of posture? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay. Did you miss any work as a result of your injury? Um, I think I missed one day. Okay. Yeah. How would you characterize Mr. Shelton's dogs just generally? Did, was this an unusual incident? Did they, did they seem to act aggressively? Well, yeah, they seem pretty aggressive. Um, I didn't really notice it, um, you know, when we first moved in. Otherwise, I wouldn't have moved in. Um, but I noticed that they were pretty aggressive because uh, one time my roommate at the time was um, walking out and kind of jumped at her. And uh, it didn't bite her or anything. It just kind of, like, nipped at her. Um, Do you remember which dog that was? No, I, I really don't know. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that's when I... It was kind of like the first red flag, and then, uh, you know, obviously they were always barking, and uh, it seemed like they had to be restrained on leashes a lot, so they seemed pretty aggressive, and then obviously the incident happened, so. Did you feel afraid living in the house with those dogs? Yeah, yeah after that, yeah. Hmm. I mean, Did they have any influence on why you moved out? Yeah, 100%. That's 100% the yeah, reason why you why moved out? We moved out that month, okay. so. The only thing I'll add is that Mr. Shelton was warned at the end of this incident that additional incidents with Kronos would result in him being declared either dangerous or vicious at that time. That's all I have for you, but Mr. Shelton might have some questions. As testified, it was August of 2018 that you moved into the apartment upstairs, yes? Yeah. And you just testified that you believed that it was Odysseus who bit you in December of 2018, correct? Mm-hmm. Are you aware that Odysseus was born in September of 2018 and therefore would have been three months old at that time? Like I said, I wasn't sure which dog it was. It was two years ago. It was two years ago. Mm -hmm. Three less years than the testimony that we heard from Mr. Frigus. How old are you, Mr. Winkler? I'm 20. 20? Yeah. So you were 18 at the time? Mm-hmm. And so a young man, 20 years old, recalling an event that happened just two years ago, is completely unsure of which dog bit him. <laughs> and yet Mr. Frigus was 100% certain that he can recall with absolute certainty which dog bit him from five years ago despite two dogs charging at him. Mr. Winkler here testified that Odysseus charged at him. That was not a possibility. Um, well, actually, both of them did. Just one of them bit me. I couldn't remember which one it was, so. That you got bit is not in question. That, that is acquiesced to. Which dog bit you is the question. And as your own testimony shows, you did not know at the time, nor do you know now, with absolute certainty, which dog bit you. As we have told the police on multiple occasions, the dog that we were having issues with was Persephone. It broke my heart to put that dog down, but she was put down. I'm sorry, I realize I need to be asking him questions. Mr. Winkler, I have no further questions for you. You're all set. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Mr. Shelton, would you stay up though? I have a couple of just follow-up questions for you. That's right. So you're saying that it, it basically could not be Odysseus that bit Mr. Winkler? It could not have been. Okay. 
Did you complete the quarantine form for Kronos? I did, but only because I was attempting to work with you guys at the time. And despite telling you that it was not Cronus who bit him, I completed the quarantine on Cronus anyway. I do believe I talked to you at the time and told you that this was ridiculous, that I'm completing a quarantine on a dog who didn't actually do the biting. And yet, I did it to satisfy the requirements and cooperate. Are you saying it was Persephone that was involved in this? Incident? I am. There's nothing in either report that indicates Persephone was involved here. And you completed the uh, quarantine form on Kronos. Is I that told, I, if it's not in the report, that is a failure by your officers to accurately report what was told to them. I have told you guys, I have testified, I testified here last time that it was Persephone who bit Mr. Winkler. I have said it over and over and over again. Okay, just to clarify though, you voluntarily did do the quarantine form for Kronos, which is After been speaking entered. with Captain Beezer and having a knockdown, drag out phone conversation about the absolute nonsense of completing a quarantine on a dog that didn't bite anyone. I said, at yeah. least let me do the quarantine on the dog who bit the person. If we're going to spend the money, if we're going to spend the time, if we're going to do these steps, let's at least do it the right way with the right dog. In Mr. In Mr. Fighter's case, you initially told Officer Hubrix uh, that the third, the large black dog, uh, you wouldn't identify who it was and said it was over at a friend's house. Uh, and that was Kronos, correct? That was Persephone. That was also Persephone? Yes, sir. Persephone just did all of these. Okay. No, I, with, with, with the... 2015, Mr. Fighter. With the Mr. Figer case, I have said the entire time that based on the wound that he had, it is next to 0% chance that it was Cronus who bit him. How do I know this? Because Cronus has the same jaw structure as Persephone who put the bite on Deborah Berry. Those are the types of wounds that a dog like this will inflict. Mr. Figer had a tiny little incision that was inflicted by Rhea, who has a pointed muzzle mouth. Inflicted by Rhea, not Persephone. Not Persephone. Did you witness the bite? I did not witness you the did bite. Not I have, witness I've the been bite. on record and very truthful and honest about this the entire time. That although I was not out in the yard, I did examine Mr. Figer's wounds in the photographs and said, okay, that must have been Rhea who bit him. I said at initially that if both of them jumped up that I could not say with certainty which one bit him. But after seeing the wound, I said that would have to be Rhea as Cronus does not have a mouth that would be able to make that kind of a wound very easily. It could potentially happen because teeth are weird and bites are weird and you know wounds end up looking weird. But you've seen the photographs of Deborah Barry's leg. That is the type of wound that a dog like Cronus with the wide muzzle, the square jaw. I think we're getting into stuff that maybe you'll talk about later. I just want to confirm that when Officer Hubrick spoke with you, you identified Irene and Rhea as the two dogs that were there. You would not identify Kronos as being there, but later admitted, yes, Kronos was there and not some friend's dog, as you initially said. I, I don't... Recall that at all? No, I. That's okay. I said Officer that there was, there was already testified dog, to that fact. There That's was a fine. third dog that was, in fact, at a friend's house at that time. But I do believe it was Cronus and Rhea who were identified immediately. Um, okay, Officer Hubrix testified differently. All right. I guess that's all I have for you for this incident. Thank you. The next incident that occurred was on March 12th, 2019. Alyssa Urata was the victim. She's now deceased, but I'll just give a brief description of the incident. She Can lived. I object again? This is all testimony of someone who was a 
known prostitute and drug addict and had lived at the house for less than a week, did not know the dogs, did not interact with the dogs other than one occasion. She claims Persephone bit her. I do not see any photographic evidence that proves that Persephone bit her, and we are taking the word of a known prostitute. And she claims that Kronos bit you. Why don't you let me describe the incident, then I'll let you ask me some questions I since, since she's not here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to intervene and I'm going to ask um, Attorney Adams for some clarification. I cannot hear all of the objection because he was not at a microphone. However, it appears to, be, it appears to me that what, he, what Mr. Shelton was doing was objecting to Officer Adams testifying uh, to this issue. The rules of evidence don't apply. Obviously, um, you can... Uh, consider the weight of the evidence that by the fact that uh, Officer Adams, or, uh, sorry, uh, Lieutenant Adams is uh, um, testifying rather than Ms. Orada, but uh, as the rules of evidence do not apply, uh, he would be allowed to testify uh, as to basically the records of the police department regarding the incident. Okay. So, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Adams, you can proceed on based on the evidence that the police department has. Okay, thank you. Ms. Arata lived in the apartment above Mr. Shelton, uh, 1026A Swift Avenue. She was exiting the residence, saw Melissa Shelton with what she described as the large black dog under the control of Mrs. Shelton on a leash. As soon as the dog saw Ms. Arata, it pulled away from Mrs. Shelton, tearing the leash from her hand and attacking Ms. Arata. It bit onto her right arm, let go, then bit her again on her right calf. Items 17 and 18 are photos of the injury to her, that's to her arm and to her calf, two punct uh, puncture wounds in both locations. Ms. Orada described the dog as the largest black dog of the four that Mr. Shelton owned. She was later able to review video from Mr. Shelton's Facebook account where she told the officer she had positively identified Kronos, hearing Mr. Shelton refer to him as such on the video. Mr. Shelton's correct, we don't have that video. Mr. Shelton was extremely uncooperative with this investigation and refused to meet with officers who were attempting to properly identify the right dog. He refused to accept the animal quarantine form he was cited for failure to comply with the rabies quarantine order, and he was found guilty of that charge. And that is, item number 19 is that citation. Kronos was then declared dangerous on March 4th, 2019. Mr. Sheldon, if you'd like to ask me some questions about this. How many convictions does Ms. Arata have for drug abuse? I have no idea, and I would object to how relevance. many convictions does she have for let's, prostitution? Let's, we're going to keep these questions based on on the dog. I, not, I'm no. calling into question the witnesses' credibility because, as we're, we're, we're I'm gonna, I, I can speak to that a little bit. Go ahead, because as a police officer for 18 years, I have to weigh people's credibility a lot, and when it seems there's conflicting statements, I have to understand why. There's nothing I see in this report that would be a motivation for Ms. Orada to identify one dog over another. However, I believe there's a pattern of you being uncooperative with investigations and regularly trying to protect Kronos. I think that's a pattern of behavior. You wouldn't tell Officer Hubrix. I don't need to protect uh, Kronos. Kronos you wouldn't tell, is not You wouldn't dangerous. tell Officer Hubrix when he asked Kronos which dogs were there. Kronos has been sitting next to Captain Veezer this entire time. You guys obviously don't like me. Do you think that my dogs can't sense that? So that's they the... can feel the hostility coming off of each and every single one of you officers. Okay, we're gonna, we're and gonna, yet we're they gonna are bring not... it back in. We're just answering questions based on this item. Then how about we not get into making personal attacks about what we believe about the other person's personality? You I believe about... my question to you was what you knew about Miss Arada's in uh, evaluating past, her integrity was your question. And her it, integrity. And, and how, you began exposing upon my integrity. When there's two competing stories, part of evaluating uh, all that. All I asked you was about her credibility. 
I, I can't speak to her individual credibility. I can speak to my experience in evaluating the truth of state. Right. I'm trying to All answer. Right. Let, one at a time, please. Let Lieutenant Adams finish and then Mr. Shelton. No, you're asking me questions right now. You asked me about. He's, he's trying to answer the question. Let him Working answer on it. it. And then, then you can respond. In evaluating the truth of someone's statement, which is speaking to their integrity, which is your question, we have two competing statements that don't match up. We evaluate who has motivation to not tell the truth and who has motivation to tell the truth. There's nothing in this incident that would tell me that Ms. Orada has any motivation to lie about which dog did this. Based on my experience with you, you do have motivation to do that. Has it been answered to your satisfaction? It's been answered to okay. my satisfaction. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And right. furthermore, would you consider being evicted for failure to pay your security deposit a motivating factor for lying? Not about lying which dog was responsible. Although we just heard several witnesses say that they couldn't identify which dog, even between these two, which don't look anything alike. Uh, Lieutenant Adams, have you seen pictures of Persephone? Yes, I have. You see Kronos laying here before you. Would you say that those dogs are similar in appearance? Yes, except for the white spot on Persephone's chest, as Correct. I recall. Persephone does have a white patch on her chest. And she's when, smaller, I believe. Not enough to notice, especially if you don't know the dogs, you know, personally. What you would see without knowing the dogs personally is two large black dogs. When looking down from a standard human bipedal position, you would not see the white patches on their chests. You would see their large black heads and their large black bodies. Would you agree that that is correct? I can't speak to that vantage point. I've never been there to evaluate your dogs together. And, but you do testify that Persephone and Cronus are extremely similar looking. Yes. No further questions. The next incidents involving Mr. Shelton's dogs occurred on March 3rd and 4th of 2020. I'm not going to go into those because that's the one where he claimed Persephone was involved and we had did the whole thing of reversing the declaration. However, it's relevant in the sense that we do have continuing patterns of behavior with the dogs not being properly controlled and causing serious injury to people. Uh, the next person I would like to call is Robert Riley. Is he here? Or Teresa Carpenter? No. Neither of them are here? Okay. Um, so this ha occurred on July 30th, 2020. And it, neither of them are here right now, but I'll give a short synopsis of what happened. Mr. Riley and Ms. Carpenter were in the upper apartment, 1026A Swift Avenue. This is the apartment of Mr. Riley's niece, and he was there with her permission. At some point, Mr. Shelton, I believe, forced entry into the apartment because he thought they were trespassing. He made allegations that the tenant at that time had been evicted, even though that was not the case. He then threatened the two people inside that if they left, he would sick his dogs onto them. And they told officers that they believed uh, that would happen. They could hear the dogs barking and sounding aggressive. Eventually, the police came. Mr. Shelton was ultimately arrested. And he then told officers that next time he would not call the police but rather let his dogs handle the situation. Mr. Shelton, do you have any questions for me about that case? It's your testimony that Demetria Berry was not evicted at the time of that incident. Is that correct? It was in process is my understanding. Is your understanding and yet you just testified that she wasn't evicted? That is my understanding. Okay. 
And yet, are you aware of the fact that we had a hearing on December 6th? I think, what, what was the date of that? No, March, that must have March been. March 3rd and, uh, I'm sorry. It, it, must, it must have been. Uh, July 30, 2020 was when this incident occurred. Yeah, it must have been uh, July 6th. On uh, July 6th, we had a eviction hearing and Demetria Berry was defaulted on for not showing up to the phone conference for the eviction hearing. And therefore, as far as I knew, after having a default eviction entered against her via the courts, that she had been evicted. Furthermore, she had not been at the apartment since before July 6th. As somewhere near the beginning of July, she vacated the apartment and had not been seen. And so on July 30th, after a month of an empty apartment above me, after three weeks, almost four weeks, of her having had a default judgment entered against her for an eviction case, I heard people upstairs. I did not force entry as you just claimed. I entered the upstairs apartment through an open door where I found two people that I had never seen before in my life in an apartment that my wife and I had just recently had to go inside and start cleaning the moldy food out of the fridge and off of the surfaces because it was starting to rot to the point where mice were propagating. And so we had to enter into the apartment where we found it uninhabited and had been uninhabited for long enough for processed cheese to be moldy out on the counters, for the fridge to be filled with rotting food. Nobody had been there in weeks. And so when I heard someone upstairs, I went to protect the property as any one would do. And when I found people up there that I did not recognize, I began to call the police. At which point, Mr. Riley physically assaulted me. And when the police got there, rather than investigating what was going on with two people being in my home, rather than removing them, you guys immediately began escalating the situation with me. Immediately became hostile with me. And instead, instead of making me feel safe by at the very least taking them out of the apartment to speak to them, you guys refused to make someone who believed they were the victim of a, Cronus, I know, come here, sit, sit, stay, I know, who believed he was the victim of people breaking into an empty apartment that he was supposed to be managing, rather than making me feel safe and secure, your officers escalated a situation with me. Uh, let me ask you something, Lieutenant Adams. How much money did the Sheboygan Police Department spend on de-escalation training? I couldn't speak to the amount of money spent in significant but time, you, however. Significant time? Yes. And so the de-escalation training, I believe, should include something about making victims of a crime feel safe and protected, right? You took this de-escalation training, did you not, Lieutenant? I did, and I would say in this case, in the criminal case, and 
would, would show that the victims of this crime were Robert Riley and Teresa Carpenter, and you were the arrested party. Yes, and yet, this all happened because I called the police because people were breaking into my apartment. Do you not feel as though in that instance, what needed to happen was some de-escalation and speaking to both parties and ascertaining the facts. I'd object to relevance well, at this point. Well, uh, the relevance is that all of this is a continued campaign of harassment by the police department who enforces a double standard okay, of applying now, the law. Mr. Shell, we're just pontificating now. Do you have, do you have a, a specific question for Bill? Lieutenant Adams? Yes, I do. Why did his officers not de-escalate a situation where someone believed his home was being broken into? I, I'm not even sure what you mean by that. The officers did a very good job trying, to, stick, trying to stabilize. I mean that there were people in my home. That's why I called in, the police. In fact, one of why to answer your question about- Why were they not removed okay. from the home to make I'll, me feel safe and secure? I'll answer your question about de-escalation a little bit. As I, I'm going from memory now because I didn't see a reason to bring this video. But as I recall, officers repeatedly tried to separate you from the situation, get you to talk to them somewhere else so they could in fact de-escalate it because the people you had just barged in on were extremely agitated as well. They said you had threatened your dogs on them. You were extremely agitated. Their, ex their attempt to de-escalate the situation was to get you to remove, and as I recall, you were completely uncooperative and refused to do so. They, so they had to talk to you there, which made it a more tense situation. So they did attempt to de-escalate. Your lack of cooperation made that very difficult. Okay. I have just one question. Has Demetria Berry been in the house since that time? It's not your turn to question. So, okay, we're, we're gonna move on, unless you have another, a, a different question I, for I do. Adams. I do, in fact. Um, what evidence do you have that I used my dogs to threaten these people? Their statement that they were not allowed Their to statement, leave. Do you have that statement with you? I do not, I was hoping they would be here to testify. And yet they're not. Okay, so we're, we're gonna, we're gonna would you on. say that if somebody cared deeply about something like this, that they would be here to testify? Unless they felt intimidated, perhaps. I guess I'm not sure. There's a lot of reasons you, people might not be here. Are you using conjecture to try and imply that? Okay, we're, we're going to move on. We're, we're just going back and forth right now. This is not helping anyone's case at this moment. We're just going back and forth. I apologize. Lieutenant Adams, do you have any other Yeah, witnesses? I'll move or? on. I will simply state that the police have been back to that residence and have had to, to contact with Demetria Berry there since that time. She was not, in fact, evicted. Yeah, Thank you. Okay, we're moving on. All right, Mr. Shelton, we're going to move on. We have, we're, you're you're going to you're going to have another time. You're going to your presentation is still coming. We're just going back and forth right now. We're not moving along the meeting at all. We're just bickering right now at this point. It's not helping anybody's case. You'll have a point to respond in, in a little bit. He, he was bringing up a point. That's then, okay, and you've stated that. We're, we're moving on right now. I'm the chair of the committee, so I'm saying we're moving on. You'll, you'll, still, you'll still have plenty of time for further. You'll, you'll have plenty of time. Your presentation is, is still coming up next. Don't worry. Lieutenant Adams. All right, the, this is actually the final incident that I want to review. It occurred September 29 and 30. And it does involve Ladarius Wimberly, who is this, the son of Demetria Berry, who both reside at 1026 A Swift Avenue. Neither of them are here right now. Uh, but just briefly, September 29 of last year, one of Chad Shelton's dogs, believed to be Odysseus, chased Ladarius, who was 15 years old, down the street in an aggressive manner without provocation. The very next day, September 30, a dog believed to be Cronus chased Ladarius down the street in an aggressive manner without provocation. Officer Hubricks has attempted contact with Ms. Berry and Ladarius on multiple occasions. I'm going to play an uh, audio recording of a phone call between myself and Mr. Shelton while Officer Hubrix was attempting contact. This is the very incident where Mr. Shelton described him being upset with Officer Hubrix. I, I think we're live streaming this. 
I just want to put the caveat, there's some profanity in this recording, so if people are listening, you might want to mute your volume. Can you turn this mic objection off? To relevance. State your objection. And to the relevance of what the conversation that we had has to do with any of this, because the conversation we had focused on Mr. Hubrick's right to be on my property without a warrant and not anything to do with the dogs. Everything that we discussed regarded Mr. Hubrick's being at my property and has no relevance to anything to do with my dogs biting, any of the incidences, any, anything to do with this, even peripherally, is Scott. nothing to do with the conversation that I and right. Lieutenant Adams had. Your objection has been heard. I do believe that this is relevant. I, so, Officer um, Lieutenant Adams, you can proceed. And just to speak to that, it, it will address directly why Demetria and Ladarius are not here today. Thank you. Okay. Please, Lieutenant Adams. Lieutenant Adams, I thought we discussed this yesterday. What's that? If your officers do not have a warrant, stay the fuck off my property. I don't give a fuck what you think is or is not a common area and what your fucking rights are. You motherfuckers are done harassing me when it comes to my dog. Officer Hubrick is in the hall with both of my dogs right fucking now petting them. I've got it on video. So go ahead with your hearing, you dumb motherfuckers, because I love wasting taxpayer money. Keep your fucking officers off my goddamn property unless you have a warrant. Is that fucking clear? I can only assume Officer Hubrick explained to you that he's attempting contact with your... I don't give a fuck what you're attempting to do. I told you yesterday, my tenants have signed a piece of paper saying that they wish to have no fucking contact with you whatsoever, that they do not feel endangered by my dog, and that they do not wish to have any further contact regarding you about this whatsoever. Your attempts to harass me through my tenants are over. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that I'm also clear, Chad, and I do not accept what you just told me. You do not have the authority to speak on behalf of your tenants. Based on the extensive I, I investigation do they have you're doing in preparation for Wednesday's hearing, your tenants appear to be I quite intimidated by you I have the and piece your dogs. Of paper right here. Officer, would you like to see the piece of paper signed by the tenants telling you that they do not want any further contact with you? You can always bring it out if you want. And if I he, show you that, will that suffice to keep you off my fucking property? Why didn't you still with me now? Because I can't corroborate that if, they find it or whatever. If they would reach out to us and contact They us. don't want contact with you. You, you gotta understand. The issue, Chad, is that you cannot speak on their behalf. I have a piece they, of paper signed by them. Uh, we, none of us recognize their signatures. We wouldn't be able to verify that. I'm sure Officer Hubrix would like to see the note. Uh, it, it might be helpful. Oh, don't worry. You guys will see it at the hearing when I make fucking idiots out of you again. Okay. Do you have any other questions for me, Chad? I, I am telling you for the last motherfucking time, I have been in contact with the Police and Fire Commission. We are having a hearing. Okay. If you continue to violate my fucking rights and harass me, I will be documenting it every time as I have today, and I will be using it not only in my hearing with the Police and Fire Commission, but in the eventual lawsuit that will be brought against the police department and the city of Sheboygan okay. if your department does not stop fucking harassing me. And I want you to understand clearly that you do not have the right to prevent the police from attempting contact with you. Lieutenant, you can shove your wants up your fucking pig ass. Okay. All right, I'm going to hang up now, Chad, okay? Go ahead, motherfucker. Have a great fucking day. Okay, bye. Mr. Shelton, do you have that letter with you? You mentioned you were going to bring it. Do you want to introduce it? Do you mind if I have a look at it? Absolutely. While you're getting it, can you tell me whether you prepared that note or Demetria Berry prepared it? Uh, I prepared it after the conversation that we had. 
You prepared it and asked her to sign it? Did you make any threats to her or promises when you had her sign it? Okay. May I see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just read it so everybody can hear. I, Demetria Berry, do hereby state and affirm that Chad Shelton had reason to believe that I was no longer residing at 1026 A Swift Avenue in September 2020, so I had not been in the apartment for over three weeks after an eviction hearing where I was defaulted against. Chad Shelton acted reasonably in defense of the property to potential threat of break-in. And you typed that, correct? I did. Okay. <clears throat> I, Demetria Berry, do hereby state and affirm that Chad Shelton's dogs are safe and I do not feel threatened by them at all. I wish I, to have the Sheboygan Police Department stop harassing my residents, trying to gather evidence against Chad Shelton and his dogs. You typed that as well? I did. And I, Ladarius Berry, do hereby state and affirm that I recant any previous statements made to the Sheboygan Police Department and that I do not feel threatened by Chad Shelton's dog. I wish to have no further contact with the Sheboygan Police Department in this matter. And you typed that as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So I wish they could be here. I, I can't speak to the reasons why they chose not to. Uh, I can guess at them. However, Mr. Shelton's neighbors did witness this incident, and they will testify. So I'd like to call Michael Antilla. Would you rather be over here? I'll go over there. Oh, hold on. I don't get the oh, question. Where would you like me to go? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to. Hey, Bill, or okay. Lieutenant Adams, we're going to just... He's going to ask you some questions on this, regarding this, if that's okay. Oh, sure. Actually, just give us a minute. Just give me a minute. He's going to ask me some questions first. Okay. Cronus, sit. <clears throat> so, despite my objection, you played the phone conversation anyway, so I feel it's only fair that we provide some context for that. Lieutenant Adams, have you and I spoken in the past? Numerous times. Numerous times. And have all of those interactions been confrontational and hostile like that phone call was? No, not always. No, not always. In fact, did I not take the Sheboygan Police Citizens course in an attempt to better get to know and understand the officers of the Sheboygan Police Department and end any sort of hostility between us. I believe the video was played to show why Demetria and Ladarius are not here. I'm not I, sure I, to the I relevance asked you whether of this or not questioning. I took right, the Sheboygan right. Police Citizens course. I believe you did. During the time of that course, was there ever a time where you felt that I was being confrontational or hostile towards you or any of your officers. I don't believe I ever personally interacted with you while you were in that course. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, did you hear about any incidences? Not that I recall. And did you know that I had Cronus with me during that course? Cronus, stop pulling. I was not aware. You were not aware. So, clearly, there was a time where there was not hostility and tension between myself and the Sheboygan Police Department. And in between that time and today, something has changed. Would you agree that someone might feel more hostile and confrontational towards a department who has had double digit interactions with him in the last two years since he came down with terminal stage four metastatic colon cancer over things as petty as dog feces not being out on the sidewalk, but in my own backyard. And in the middle of the freezing winter, when my chemotherapy causes cold sensitivity pain to the point where I am unable to drink cold beverages from the fridge. Mr. Shelton, I appreciate where you're going, but do you have any questions specifically related to the I'm just asking to, him to whether or not he that... feels that my hostility could be because of the harassment 
that I have spoken to yourself and Captain Wieser and several others about several times in the last two years. I, I can't speak to what your personal feelings are. I can tell you from my end, the hostility from you generally re revolves around investigations related to your dogs. Other investigations, you and I have spoken okay. When it comes down to your dogs biting people and us trying to investigate those incidents, you are very regularly hostile. Yeah, no further questions. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Antilla? Yes. Mr. Antilla? I'm good. I'm, they, they already saw it. Oh, saw do you it. want it? No, he can okay. keep it. Hello, sir. Please uh, state your name and raise your right hand. Michael Sheridan Antilla. Do you swear? Can you put the mic a little closer to your... All right. State your name. Michael Sheridan Antilla. All right. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Uh, excuse me one moment. Mr. Antilla, where do you live? 1022 Swift Avenue. Can you tell us where that is with respect to Mr. Shelton's residence? Right next door. Your next door neighbors? He's west of my house. Okay. You're familiar with his different dogs? Yep. Okay. Do you recall an incident that occurred on September 29th and September 30th of last year with the neighbor getting chased? Yeah, I, d I do not know the young boy's name. But okay, but does he live in the house next to you? Yeah, he lives upstairs, and okay. I was outside at the time on both them days. Okay. Can you describe what it is that you saw? I saw Odysseus on the first day run to the left and stop down by the sidewalk in the grass area by the road, uh, a house down. Uh, the young boy was running. Um, I could tell he was afraid of the dogs. Um, he tried to get a head start of the dog, and um, Odysseus stopped at some point uh, between my house and You're the next door neighbors. Plus, he's saying how somebody else felt. Mr. Shelton, you have a time to respond. This is well, Lieutenant. I'm objecting. Objection's not heard at this point. I could see when somebody's afraid. Yeah. He, because his. His physical appearance, his facial expressions, you had cues that told you he was afraid. And he yes. was being chased by the dog? Yes, he was being chased Ab by the dog. About how far was he chased? I would say about 60 yards. Okay. And this was in the street or on uh, the sidewalk? Odysseus stopped just before the street. He Did ran... he leave Mr. Shelton's property? Oh, yeah. He ran across my property into the next property. Did you see, so your neighbor's name is Ladarius. Did you see him do anything to provoke this? Uh, no, from what I've seen, he wanted to go home like he does every day. And, and that's how I know he's afraid of the dog is he peeks around the corner to see if he's able to go there. And he must have seen Odysseus in the, on the left-hand side of uh, Chad's house because as soon as he seen him, he started running down the street. And then Odysseus came after him. And you, did you take a photo that day um, of the dog that was out at large? Yeah, actually, I believe I did take a photo of that. Would you, item 21 is a photo we have. I just want to confirm it's a photo that you took. Yes, that is the photo. Okay, and that is Odysseus? That's Odysseus. And that's the dog that chased Ladarius? Correct. Okay. Where, where is that dog? What property is that dog on in that photo? That's my neighbor's property that is east of my house. That is not Mr. Shelton's property? No. Okay. And then the next day there was another incident. Is that correct? Yep. Did you witness that as well? I sure did. What happened then? He tried uh, looking first from the sidewalk. Who's that? Um, the boy? The young boy. Okay. And... At that time, it was a black dog that came out, 
he turned around and ran uh, southwest across the street and it followed him most of the way there. And that time I heard Chad yelling for Cronus to come back. So you heard Mr. Shelton yell for Cronus? I did. Okay. And again, did, did Ladarius do anything to provoke that attack? No. He did not. And it occurred, it, the chase occurred off of Mr. Shelton's property. What was that? The dog chased him off of Mr. Shelton's property? Uh, he was on the sidewalk wanting to get in his apartment, so it quite wasn't, I guess, the property yet. I, I guess my but question I, is, did I, Cronus ever leave Mr. Shelton's property on that oh, incident? Yeah, Cronus did. Yep. He did, okay. Have there been any other incidents as you've been neighbors with Mr. Shelton regarding his dogs? From day one. <laughs> From day one. Uh, Cronus and Persephone at the time. And um, he had another black dog. I think it's... Irania. Um, Irania, yeah. Yeah, Irania. They charged after, at the time my daughter was dating a man and they were sitting on the porch. I was out there with them and my wife was as well. Uh, bit uh, my daughter's boyfriend on the butt cheek. They ran in the house and Cronus was the first one up the stairs and bust through my door and busted the jam. So there I had to buy a new, a new Cronus door. Cronus busted through your door? Yes. And I had to buy a new door because of it. Did you call the police about that? Yeah, actually, Mr. McCarthy was there. He took that down. I don't know how I missed that one. There was a lot to go through. Uh, any other incidents that stand out? Yep, I got attacked by Cronus four times coming home from work in the morning. And I guarded myself with my forearm, put it up, and he latched onto my arm. And then I pushed him back and yelled at him, and then I went in the house. I did not call the police on any of those occasions. Are the dogs under anybody's control when these are ha this is happening? Those dogs are never on anybody's control. They just wander around freely. That's my witness all the time. How never, long have you lived in the neighborhood there? I've been here going on 11 years now. 11 years. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the dogs, Mr. Shelton's dogs, present a danger to your neighborhood? Yes, I do. Okay. That's all I have for you. Do you have questions? Yeah. Okay. So, it's your testimony that you've been attacked by Cronus at least four times. No, it's my testimony. I got attacked four times by Cronus. Not at least. Oh, okay. So exactly four times. Yeah. And you called the police? No, I didn't. You didn't call the police. You have wounds. No, I was wearing this coat. You, you were wearing that jacket? Yep. So there's tears or bite marks. It's a pretty strong coat. Pretty strong coat. And I pushed into him, so. What does pushing into him do? Opens his mouth up. Opens his mouth. And this is based on what training you have with aggressive dogs? I question your training. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm asking the questions here. What training do you have with aggressive dogs? Can I be done? Because that's my testimony. I don't have to answer. I don't, I don't have any training. And I don't you don't have it. any training. It's just, so, so it's just you, common knowledge. You know how to stop an aggressive dog without any training. What no, I just, mighty I do, natural instincts you must have, have. I do what um, I have to do. So let me ask you this. Why didn't you call the police? Because I work. Because you work. Didn't cause any if, harm. If a you. dog attacked you, and you believe that dog to be dangerous and a danger to the neighborhood, you couldn't take five minutes to call the police and tell them that a dog just attacked you? As you remember, you and I were not on very good terms either. 
I would say that that's irrelevant and like not even close to what's being asked here. I'm asking you why well, you officer, did not call the, officer, the police the officer, yeah. about a dog that you are now testifying attacked he, you. He answered that question. Do you have another question? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, you live next door to me on Swift Avenue. Uh, do you live alone? No. No? I Who do you family. live with? I have a family. You have a family? Who do you live with? None of your business who I live with. I assume your wife lives there with you, right? That's none of your and, business. And, and have you and your wife... Mr. Sheldon, what's the question in relevance? The, the question is, the have you and your wife ever had interactions with me and my dog... Have you ever had interactions with me and my dog, with you and your she wife? She has witnessed the same things I have. She have you didn't. and your wife had interactions with me and my dog? I have. And, and, and has dog, your wife been daughter, there during those interactions? My, have you sat my on your porch? Has, my Mr. Sheldon, has. he's trying to answer your questions. Please let him answer. My daughter has on her way to work. Corona tried charged at her. And Have you her. and your wife had interactions with me and my dogs while on your porch? I'm not going to answer that. You're not going to answer that. So I'm have here. you and your I'm wife to witness what have you and your wife asked me to bring my dogs over to your porch so that she could say hi to them? No. That's a lie. That is Have a you lie. and your wife asked me to bring Odysseus over to the porch so that she could say hi to him? I've, I have not witnessed that. You were sitting right there. Nope. <laughs> yes, you were. I have not personally witnessed that. Have you, have you when pet Odysseus was my a dogs puppy? while on your porch? When Odysseus was a puppy? Have you pet my dogs while on your porch? No, I don't have. Yes, that. you have. I do not have that kind of Why are you lying? Your okay, dog. Mr. Sheldon, we're not going to we're not going to badger the witnesses with anymore. Dogs. Please ask a specific question. You're just asking a question in a different way. When your dogs attack me aggressively, no, I don't have that inner kind, of, kind of interaction with them, nor will I ever. Don't worry, I have witnesses. All right. Any other questions for? Uh, if the witness is going to continue to lie, there's no point in continuing to ask him questions. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to call Mr. Vasso with Thacker. Oh, okay. I do have one other question. It's too late, okay. sorry. Mike, can you get no, Vasso no, with Thacker? No, 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 please. We've taken up enough of everyone's time. Mr. Sorensen has said it's too late. Let's just move on. I am moving on. We're getting to the next witness. Hi, sir. Please state your name. My name is Vasa Thak. Good afternoon, everyone. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Thacker, where do you live? 1021 Swift Avenue. And Sweet where is Wisconsin. that with respect to Mr. Shelton's residence? Excuse me? Where is that with respect to Mr. Shelton's residence? It's directly across the street from my house, Kitty Corner, basically. Across the street. Okay. You're familiar with his different dogs? Yes. I understand that you as well witnessed the incident on September 29 and 30 when the neighbor boy was chased by dogs on those two occasions? Yes. Were there other occasions as well? More than that occasion, yes. Okay. Can you tell us about the most recent occasion that you recall? Was it on September 30? Was yes. that the most recent? Yes. Okay. Can you describe that? Um, me, and my, me and my significant other, we was, she picked me up from work. We was... Um, coming down Swift, heading east on Swift. And the neighbor that stays across the street from me, the kid that stays upstairs above, um, I don't know his name, but the guy with the dogs, I stopped at the stop sign, which is normal, and I see the kid, you know, he kind of hesitant to want to go to his house. As he was walking towards, towards his house, my significant other told me, she said, stop for a minute. You know, don't, don't go, just stop. So I stopped. As the kid was trying to go to his house, you just heard the kid just yell. 
and just start running. As soon as he took off running, you just seen that? Matter of fact, it's that one. I don't know his dog's names, but that particular, because I know he have a girl dog too, and he have a brindle stripe dog. And the reason why I know the brindle stripe dog, because I have a pit bull myself that, that's butter. So what I did to distinguish his dogs, because I don't know him or his dogs personally, I, I would say butter, which would be his brittle stripe dog because of my dog. And he have a girl dog that's big like the boy dog. So that's how I was able to distinguish which dogs is the ones that's doing, making all, you know, wreck it. But on that Pacific day, the kid uh, was coming to his house. I guess he was getting out of school and um, he was on his way to his house and that dog was loose. He was standing in, this, in between his neighbor house on the right side and his house, which is the gangway. And as the kid was walking up the side, the same side that he stayed on, which is the house, that dog come running out the side of the house and chased that kid clean across the street. He crossed my street, he chased him all the way up to the corner. And by the time, when that, when that dog chased him up to the corner, he finally decided to want to come out. But I, I don't, wherever, the, when he came outside, he just came out all boisterous, acting crazy, talking crazy. And me and him had a couple of verbal words. And he was threatening me with his dog. What he was doing was taking his dog, smacking his dog on his ass, telling his dog, oh, my dog will do this, my dog will do that to you. So me and him had a couple of words. And I told him, you let your dog loose, I'm going to beat your ass, plain and simple. So um, another occasion that I done seen his dogs is a brutal strike dog that his wife just had chased the same kid. But that time when, he, when, it, when a brutal strike dog chased the kid, he chased the kid eastbound towards the lake. I have cameras on my house. And it's a couple uh, situations where I was trying to upload my cameras. So um. Adams, uh, I was trying to, you know, give him the footage of some situation, but my wife had caught a situ uh, one of the incidents with the dog had actually got loose and was on the side of the house on that Pacific day when he chased that kid. So, but yeah, them, you know, and, and, and it's sad to say, you know, them, them can be some good dogs, you know, and I heard him keep screaming and trying to question everybody, oh, do you got dog experience? Let me tell you, I got 17 Who's years. Not to trust me? I have 17 years of Do dog experience. Not address me. I have 17 years of Do dog experience. He's in chat. He's not addressing. He's addressing me. Stop. I have 17 years of dog experience, which I've trained Rockwallers, Dogman Pitchers, Pit Bulls, and it's all on how the owner acts around the dogs to make the dogs react the certain ways that they react. I have a pit bull myself that I still have to this day. And it's nothing like, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's all up to the owner on what the owner make the dog do. You know, if, if the dog sense that the owner is hostile, the dog going to get hostile right along with it. And that's exactly what his dogs do. That dog right there specifically is his main trained dog that he try to show off because he want to be a dog whisper. And but what, what happens is that the rest of his dogs follow behind that dog. So whatever that dog do, then the rest of them dogs going to react. That's why he keeps that dog by him. In the summertime, he comes outside with his shirt off, sit on his front porch. Yeah, I got big dogs. I, my dog can do this. My dog can kill your ass. You know what? You can keep all your threats. Oh, and that's, that's the main reason why me and him got into it. I've been standing over there on Swift for three and a half years. I've never had any altercation with any of my neighbors but him because of his dogs. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I, it sounds like you have extensive experience with that. I guess just to summarize, he has um, got his dog agitated by smacking it and yeah, making he threatening grabbed gestures. Neck, he grabbed him, like if they, if they got the collar on, he'll have the collar and smack him on the ass. Was that Kronos? And that's that dog right there. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. you have questions? Seventeen years of experience. Seventeen. How much of that was professional? Seventeen. What was your job and what was your professional capacity as a dog trainer? My job was to take dogs and rehabilitate dogs. That was my job. And what company did you work for? What company did I work for? It's down in Gary, Indiana. It's called Whisper. It's called what? Whisper. Whisper? Down in Gurney, Indiana? Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana? Yes. Let's see if this place exists.
How old are you? I'm 41. How long did you live in Indiana? That doesn't matter. When did you move to Wisconsin? That's irrelevant to this case. Well, if you have 17 years of experience and you're only 41 years old, that's a significant portion of your life. How long have you been living in Wisconsin that you had 17 years to spend in Indiana learning this? I've been living in Wisconsin on and off. So it's not 17 straight years of experience? Oh, yes, it is, because I've also trained dogs in Wisconsin as well. For what company? It doesn't matter. If you have a company that you train for, why would it? I personally don't have a company. You must not hear me. I've worked for many companies. I've worked for a company down in Gary, Indiana. So it's not professional. Excuse me? So it's not professional dog training experience. You are doing this in your own capacity. No. Without working for an actual company. No. This is a company that then I work for. Then what company I just do told you work you. for? It's called Whispers in Gary, Indiana. They might have changed the name throughout the course, but that's what the name that it was called when I was working for them. It's actually in Maryville to be more specific. There is no record of any. Oh, did Jeff object to Mr. Shelton's ability to do an exhaustive search for this company? Oh, I can prove my ability to do an exhaustive Mr. search Shelton, if that's required. Do you have another question for the yeah. witness? Yeah, I do. So it is your testimony that you told me you would beat my ass. Exactly. I told you if you released your dogs on me or my wife that I would beat your ass. That's my exact You words. told me that you would beat my ass. Did you also tell me you would pound my head in? Excuse me? Did you also tell me that you would pound my head in? Beat your ass, pound your head in, whichever way you go. Did you, you also tell dogs, me that you would kill my happen. dogs? Excuse me? Did you also tell me that you would kill my dogs? No, I didn't tell you I was going to kill your dogs. But I did tell you I was going to beat you your call, ass. You did you call dogs. me a faggot? Yeah. Did you threaten me? Right, this is not relevant. Excuse with, me? What, what, did this, I call you a faggot? Yeah. All right. This is not relevant. Let's ask questions specific to your case at hand My right now. relevancy. What, what, what we called names does not matter right My now. relevancy is that not only is he testifying to this in this hearing, but the last witness had phone video evidence of him making these threats. The police saw this, and rather than issuing a citation to any of the people making threats of physical violence, they were more focused on issuing a citation to me. This goes once again, and I understand that you want me to wait until my closing statement to make all of these statements, but I'm just reminding everybody throughout the course of this that this is harassment by the police. They are not interested in applying a fair standard of the law when it comes to me. This man has testified here before you and will walk out of here a free man with no citations saying that he threatened to beat my ass, pound my head in, called me multiple derogatory slurs, and the police have done nothing and will do nothing about it because they were made against me. I assure you, Mr. Sorensen, Mr. Decker, members of the council appearing by video, that none of you would appreciate someone walking onto your property, making threats that this man has testified that he made against me, and to have the police respond, not only with not doing anything about that, but by continuing to harass you and look for ways to cite you. Any further questions for the no witness? No further questions for the witness. Thank you. Just one follow-up question. The threats that you made to Mr. Shelton were in response to him threatening you with his dog. With his Is that dog. correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming today. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to stay here because I just got one thing to close with. Don't worry. Um, on that case, Mr. Shelton was charged with two counts of animal at large. He was found guilty of both of those. Additionally, Officer Hubrix, who is the neighborhood officer, is responsible for making sure that Mr. Shelton complies with the dangerous dog ordinance. In spite of it being nearly two years, he is still not compliant. He has received four citations for that and been found guilty of all of those. 
So just in summary, I would say that Kronos meets the following vicious dog criteria. He caused a serious injury to or killed a person or domestic animal, attacked a person in such a manner as to require defensive action to prevent bodily injury or property damage when such person is conducting himself or herself peacefully and lawfully on property other than that of the owner of the attacking dog, and attacked a person in such a manner as the result in property damage or an injury to the person when such person is conducting himself peacefully and lawfully on property other than the owner of the attacking dog. Odysseus meets the following dangerous dog criteria. He chased or attacked any person, sorry, any human being or domestic animal without provocation. He demonstrated an approach or apparent attitude of attack toward any human being or domestic animal in a menacing fashion without provocation. As we've heard, there are numerous people who've been negatively impacted by Mr. Shelton's dogs. Two of them moved out of their home for fear to currently live in his neighborhood and are afraid. There's two people that didn't even come to testify because they signed a document allegedly that Mr. Shelton typed up himself. There are a number of people who have been negatively impacted by his dogs. So I would ask that you maintain the declaration of viciousness on Kronos and dangerous on Odysseus. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Adams. Uh, I'm sorry, do I not get to call witnesses? Yep, it's your turn now. I it's, didn't it's... know we were making closing statements. Nope, so now it's, it's your turn to make your presentation. You can call witnesses and then you can make your closing statement. <clears throat> I would like to call. Do you want to call witnesses first or do you want to do a witnesses. presentation? Yeah. Okay. I would like to call Melissa Shelton. All right. You can just drop his leash. You don't have to take him up there with you. All right, please state your name. Melissa L. Kuhn Shelton. All right, do you, swear to tell the, the, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Melissa, uh, you are my wife, but we are legally separated, but you still come by to help with the dogs. <laughs> is that an accurate statement? That is correct. Okay. And in the course of helping me with my dogs, with our dogs. You have um, been witness to several of the incidences that were discussed today, correct? Correct. I'm gonna start with uh, some of them and just kinda go down the list. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I thought somebody was. Uh, in the case of uh, Mr. Figer, um, Ed, First name? Ed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> did you see the wound sustained by Ed? Yes, I did. And I was witness to Cronus jumping at his front and then Rhea jumping at his back of his arm where, in fact, his wound was. Correct. Uh, so the wound was on his tricep. Um, on the back side of his arm, and have you seen wounds dealt by Persephone, who, as we have covered, is almost identical to, Coron to Cronus? Yes, I have seen wounds that Persephone has done. And did Ed's wound resemble in any way the wounds that Persephone did? No. What kind of wound did Ed have? It looked like a nick, like if I bumped and hit my arm on this, it would nick a chunk out of my arm. And uh, have you seen Rhea make similar bite marks in the past? Uh, yeah but it was mostly playing and over. Again. Right, yeah, I understand. You know, we're, we're not here to, to discuss whether Rhea's aggressive, but she has nipped, and the wounds were similar in appearance to the ones that you saw on Ed? Oh, yes. The one, I'm sorry, that you saw on Ed. Okay. Um, I have one on my stomach. Yeah. So, so uh, again, a young man couldn't tell which dogs had attacked him two years ago, and yet a septuagenarian can recall with perfect accuracy which dog bit him five years ago. 
Um, now moving on. Uh, what's Mike's wife's name? Shannon. Shannon. Uh, do you know Mike and Shannon who live next door? I do know Mike and Shannon. I have been over and sat on Shannon's porch plenty of times and had conversations with her. And were the dogs ever occasionally with Occasionally we've had the dogs with, and occasionally it hasn't been. It was just having a cigarette on their front porch. And during the times when you've had the dogs with, have, has there ever been any apprehension or hesitation on Shannon or Mike's parts for you to have the dogs up on their porch? No, the only time uh, there was any hesitation was when their son or son-in-law was visiting because he was on crutches, they just stated that, like, make sure that, you know, a reasonable none of the dogs request. were going to come around. And sure, if someone's on crutches, large dogs, you never know. Yeah, reasonable request. But many other times you've gone over to Mike and Shannon's porch with Cronus, Odysseus, Irene, other dogs. and Other so dogs omitting Persephone because Persephone was the one that jumped at their door. Persephone is the one that used to knock me off my feet on the leash. Persephone would be the one that jumped up the side of a neighbor's house. Yeah, we'll, we'll get so. to Persephone. We, we, we understand that. I'm just saying that Cronus, Odysseus, Irene, you've, you've had dogs over to Mike and Shannon's porch on Many. multiple, loca multiple yeah. occasions. Each dog multiple times. Yeah. But multiple dogs at once. Yeah. Has Shannon asked you to bring Odysseus over so that she could say hi? No. No? She, she used to she ask me. That's why, I, that's why I ask. You know, I just wondered if she also asked you. But, yeah. you know, just trying to establish, that's fine. She did ask one time if it, he could come up on the stairs. And okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that's like, kind of what he, I was he getting didn't at. didn't want to come up on the stairs. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. But yeah, either way, I, I'm, I'm making the point that uh, you are aware that they have requested yes. interaction with the dogs. Mm -hmm. Not just accepted, actually right. requested. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the incident with uh, Mr. Winkler, Joe. Uh, which dog did you have outside at the time? It was Persephone. It was Persephone. And when? I know it was Persephone because she's my dog. She's a female dog, and she doesn't lift her leg to pee. Right, and right. Um, Which case is that? Uh, Mr. Winkler? Mr. Winkler. Joseph. Both the cases with Mr. Winkler. Um, was Odysseus even... At the house during I the don't time when I think Odysseus was even born while Joe lived there. I, I don't recall Odysseus being born. I certainly know he wasn't at the house. Correct. Um. So again, and granting that memory becomes foggy over time, but again, his testimony that it was Odysseus simply there was no way it simply could been. not be true. No. Okay. No and um, uh, give me just one second. I'm sorry. I, the chemotherapy affects my memory, okay. and so it's hard to, like, keep everything sorted. I'm just... When... Deborah Barry got bit. How many dogs did you have with you? Just oh, per only Persephone. Right. I was going to say just Persephone, right? Correct. And Cronus, uh, Irene, and I think Rhea, maybe? Mm. Was Rhea still there? Rhea, I think, was still there. But Cronus and Areni, for sure, were in the house with me. Yeah. And the police still issued a quarantine order for three dogs, despite you telling them that you had Persephone with you and Correct. only Persephone with you. Correct. And 
So despite the fact that only one dog bit, and clearly only one dog bit, they issued quarantine orders for three dogs. And you had already told them that it was Persephone. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to get that clear. Um, after Persephone bit Deborah Berry, did we arrange a meeting with Chief Domogowski and uh, Lieutenant Adams and uh, an officer in order to discuss the, the dangerous dog designation and quarantines that they had placed on the other dogs. Yes, we did, and that was after I went in for questioning about it as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. They brought you in for questioning. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so we, we arranged a meeting. Was I confrontational or hostile towards them in setting up this meeting? Not in setting up the meeting, no. And what was... What did we bring as a offering of peace? That we would, we would put Persephone down. No, no, no. I'm just talking about what we brought as an offering of peace to the officers. Uh, cookies or something? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. Yes. We brought in cupcakes, homemade cupcakes, to the meeting. Nobody goes into a meeting with a Pyrex dish full of cupcakes intending to have a confrontational or hostile negotiation. When you bring cupcakes, the hope is that everybody will remain level-headed, enjoy a sweet treat, and discuss the options available, lay the cards on the table, and hopefully everybody walks away I'm not sure this a winner. Uh, this is relevant because it goes towards the police department's attitude towards myself and my dogs, which is why they are pursuing so doggedly, no right. pun intended. But let's just proceed then. So um, when we presented our uh, proposal to Chief Domogowski, the proposal was that we would acquiesce that I had failed to rehabilitate Persephone and that she would be put down in order for them dropping the dangerous dog designation on Cronus. Correct. What was Chief Domogowski's response? That uh, he wasn't going to drop the... That he said that will never happen. And the hearing... the meeting pretty much deteriorated from there with no ground being gained, not Correct. even being able to, to explain uh, to them what we wanted to do because Chief Domogowski would not even hear an option yeah. that left Cronus not designated as dangerous. Okay. Um, have you witnessed Officer Inger interact with your dogs? I have witnessed a couple of officers Cronus. interact with my dogs. Uh, officer Inger would be Cronus. the, uh, uh -uh. the uh, Asian officer, not Officer Hang. The one that met us out at the uh, dog run park that one day. Officer Hang? Officer Inger. Inger? Okay. Yeah. He met us out at the dog run park that one day when Cronus was still pretty young. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, did you witness Officer Inger interact with your dogs? Yes. Uh, did Officer Inger state that your dogs did not appear to be dangerous to him at all? Right. Okay. Um, have you seen other officers interact with your dogs? Yes, I do. I believe I've seen, uh, I'm not sure if it's Officer McCarthy. She's got longer blonde hair. She's come to the house a couple of times. Um, and when we took them out to have pictures, I don't know which officer that was. But. Have you ever noticed an officer fearful of your dogs? Have you ever noticed not, an officer not, be... Not with them visually being able to see my dogs. Right. Have you, ever, have you ever had an officer get bit, 
growled at, snapped at, anything? No. No. Okay. Every time you've ever been involved with a dog who ended up biting someone, it was Persephone? Correct. Other than probably Rhea, with although added. nobody can prove with any certainty Correct. what dog ended up beating, uh, biting Mr. Uh, Figer. Um, but as far as you believe, it was Rhea who bit Mr. Figer, and every other dog you can say with 100% certainty it was Persephone who ended up biting someone. Yes. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant? I just have a couple questions. Would you say Chad has a favorite dog of all the dogs? As what? Would you say that Mr. Shelton has a favorite dog a of favorite all of them? A favorite dog? Yeah. Yeah, mm. it was Persephone. It, it, it was Persephone. Cronus Currently? was the first dog, but Persephone was his baby that he used to sing to and cuddle with and sit on his lap until he got diagnosed with cancer. Well, the dogs he has now, would you say Kronos is his favorite dog? He doesn't favor any of the dogs. Doesn't really family. favor any of them? Okay. Do you know why? Uh, so you were, with Mr. Fighter's incident, you actually had the dogs, correct? Was that Ed? Yes. Yes. Okay, and so that was Irene, Rhea, and Kronos? Were that the was Kronos, and Rhea was outside. Irene was inside the house. And okay. then our other dogs was with a friend. Okay, I, it, my understanding is that uh, the three dogs were outside. Cronus was the one. There were only two dogs. Outside. There were only two. Okay. I only took them out two at a time. Okay, do you know why Chad um, would not tell Officer Hubrix that Cronus was the other dog that was there? I don't know. Does it seem like a strange thing to do? As far as you know, was there any reason to hide that fact? I don't know. I know that I have, with the other cases, informed the police when they asked me which dog it was, that it was Persephone that bit. With. Would you say you've always done that in a timely manner? Uh, not so much with Demetrius. as mom Deborah, mm -hmm. I think it was. But by that point, I was done trying to tell the police again that it was Persephone. How about, how about a year prior to that with Ms. Orada? Were you timely in speaking to officers then? I'm sorry. The previ a, a year prior to that when Ms. Orada was bit, were you guys timely in speaking with officers then? Oh, yes. I told the officer when it happened, when they came. I uh, asked Alyssa if she was bit or hurt, and she said no. And I took Percy in the house, and then we didn't hear anything else until the next day when she went to the hospital and then came back and said. Do you recall officers trying to make contact with you both and being told on the phone that, okay, you can come over now, and then they show up 45 minutes later and then you're, they were told, nope, it's too late now, you can't come back, come back another time, and this went on for several days? This is the Mizorata incident? Does that uh, ring a bell? I don't recall that. Um, okay. Usually of an officer, there was only one time that I can recall of that an officer was going to come over, and I had to go to work, and I was an hour and a half late, and the officer was late, and I went to work. For the Miss, Mr. Fighter case, um, I, I guess in your experience with dogs, when there's a dog bite, what is the purpose of quarantining the dog afterwards, the rabies quarantine? To make sure that they don't bite or... Um, have rabies or? Correct. It's to show that they don't exhibit signs of rabies. Right. Do you know the benefit of that to the victim? To make sure that they don't have rabies or get sick? Correct. And it means they can avoid a, a painful procedure of, of getting Correct. treated for rabies. So it's an important process, the quarantine process. We've had numerous instances where neither of you um, completed the quarantine process, and there were several citations for which Mr. Shelton was found guilty. 
Going back to Mr. Fighter's case, there was a quarantine that was done, and it was done on Kronos. Correct. Do you recall that? Yeah. Okay. Does that seem strange if Cronus isn't the one it, that it, bit the dog? Yeah, it did. Can you and tell me why? Not, can you tell me why both dogs weren't I quarantined? Have, you guys didn't do your jobs. All right, Mr. Sheldon. He, so Officer Hendricks presented the problem that the victim, Mr. Fighter, said it was the black dog. Your testimony at the time was that you didn't know which dog bit I him. Said that that it you saw could them both jump up. Be Rhea. Could possibly be Rhea. Mr. Fighter was confident it was Kronos. All right. And and Officer Hubricks explained with the importance of the quarantine that if we're not sure we have to quarantine both, and you or Mr. Shelton made the decision to quarantine Kronos and not Rhea. I didn't make that decision. Mr. Shelton did? Okay. I think that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, I You can call him as a witness yeah. if you're done with your wife. Unless you got more questions for your wife first. I think it's more she's done with me, but okay. <sighs> Sorry, bad joke. All right, please state your name. William Adams. All right, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, do, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Adams. Um, you wanted to make a big deal out of these uh, quarantine orders and, and how they weren't followed, so I feel it's only appropriate that I ask you a few questions about them. When we were telling you guys that it was almost certainly Rhea who bit, our options were quarantine Cronus or quarantine both of them. We were never given an option to just quarantine Rhea. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. That is correct. So I, I will correct one thing you said though. Uh, there was no evidence ever presented that it was most certainly Rhea. The only person who witnessed the bite aside from Mr. Fighter was Mrs. Shelton and she just testified that she was not sure which one bit him? Uh, she said... And you were not there, correct? She, I, I was at the house. I was not outside. Okay. And as stated, nobody would know with 100% certainty which dog it was. And yet, we were not presented with any reasonable options. We either had to quarantine the dog that we were almost... 100% certain did not bite Ed Feiger or quarantine both of our dogs, an expense we could not afford and something that would just simply be not necessary since only one dog had bitten him. And yet, despite us telling this to you, our options were quarantine Cronus or quarantine both of them. Then, with the Alyssa Aruda incident, you bring up the timeliness with which we discussed things with the police. And yet, by your own testimony, we spoke on the phone. I told you guys that I was available right now. And then an hour later, you call saying, oh, the officer's at your door. I apologize that I have medical reasons and appointments to keep. I apologize that my wife has a work schedule to keep. But we did remain in communication with your department and attempt I do believe you are correct that it took two or three times of attempting to get together before we were finally able to, to provide a statement. But in no way, shape, or form were we uncooperative. We told you what our schedule was, and if our schedule did not match up with your schedule, as clearly it did not, since you were not available at the drop of a dime either, 
then that's equal fault. That's not us refusing to talk to you. We had several times where we said we can talk. And you guys said, well, we don't have an officer available right now. Does that make it your fault that the report did not get in on time? No. Absolutely ridiculous and an attempt to simply paint my character as someone who does not cooperate with the police. Something that is patently not true. I have cooperated with your department even through years of harassment. So, my next question to you, Lieutenant, is when Alyssa told my wife that she was not bit, we assumed that that was what had happened, that she had a scare, but was not bit. When we were told now that you guys wanted to talk to us about her being bit, yeah, we did not believe her. Those photographs that you showed look consistent with drug abuse to me. I know because unfortunately I have had a few friends go down the dark road of using hard drugs like heroin. And that is exactly what their arms and legs started looking like. Those do not look anything like any of the dog bites that I have seen in my life. Not even a little bit. And so you're right. I did refuse to comply with that quarantine. However, my question to you is, how many dogs does the Sheboygan Police Department believe bit Deborah Barry? How many? Yeah. How many dogs do you believe were responsible for the single bite that Deborah Barry suffered? Well, she suffered two bites, one on her arm and one on her leg. That's Alyssa Aruda, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not thinking Deborah, Deborah Barry. Barry the the one Deborah, serious bite. You, are under, you understand Deborah Barry is not part of this hearing, correct? We, we agreed last time that Persephone was responsible for Deborah Barry. You we, just we, brought up that incident in regards, only, to, in regards to me following the animal quarantine. So my question to you is, I, how many dogs does the Sheboygan Police Department believe bit Deborah Barry? If I said Deborah Barry, that's my fault. I, I was referring to the you Alyssa You brought up Arada the animal quarantines the that were not prior. followed. Cor yes, I did bring that that's up. That's what this is about. Okay, what, do you have a specific question you, for Lieutenant? How many dogs does the Sheboygan Police Department bit Deborah Barry? I believe only one. Only one, and yet, how many dogs did you issue a quarantine order for? So the answer to that, and we actually saw a video of Officer Fisher attempting to interview immediately after that incident uh, to gain that very important information of who, which dog was responsible, and the committee got to see how you responded to that, brushing your teeth, extremely hostile, suggesting, it wasn't, just been suggesting it wasn't even any of your dogs because your dogs were all inside. You they did were. not cooperate with that investigation. And just I like did. in Officer Hubrick's uh, investigation with Mr. Fighter, if we're not certain, we need to quarantine all of the possible animals that were involved for the you sake of the victim. You were certain that it wasn't Cronus because that was exactly what I testified immediately was that I was in bed with Cronus at the time. Is there another, is there a specific question? The, yeah, the question is how many dogs did you issue a quarantine order for? It'd take me a minute to look. I believe there were two that you were given and, and you were cited for Three. two and found guilty of both. Three quarantine orders for one dog bite. And, and to just address your previous question, I didn't quite get to it. Looking at Ms. Urata's injuries, they do appear consistent with a dog bite to me. That's your opinion. Yes, it is. And yet I've seen way more dog bites than you. So... I Any, have investigated numerous dog bites. I'm sure you have. Have you rehabilitated aggressive dogs? No. Have you worked with any shelters in their capacity to rehabilitate aggressive dogs? No. Have you... I have no professional experience training dogs. You have no professional dogs. experience. So would you say that you have witnessed more arrests than I have, but I've probably witnessed more aggressive dogs than you have? 
I would wholeheartedly agree that you have witnessed more aggressive dogs than I have, as I believe you witness them on a daily basis. <laughs> so childish. Anyway, uh, the question for you is, if one dog bit and you issued three quarantine orders to a man on disability that you guys know cannot afford the multi-hundred dollar quarantine fee for any single dog, let alone for three dogs. And yet, I tell you, my wife tells you, on multiple occasions that it was Persephone, whether it was done immediately following the investigation or not, is irrelevant. Because I told the officer exactly what I knew. I knew that I was asleep in bed with Cronus, and that by the time I got out of bed, all of my dogs were in the house. Okay, Mr. Uh, Sheldon, is there, is there a question? You're, yeah, the, you're the, question is, the question is, why would the Sheboygan Police Department issue three quarantine orders for one dog bite I'm going to after, object being, to relevance. after being told? This case is not being considered today. Okay. Other, other questions? It, it's been brought up as evidence for him multiple times. And, and, and he's answered it, and now, now we're repeating ourselves and talking in circles? Well, my, my only thing is that there was one dog bite. If, if there's one punch thrown in a fight, arresting three people for throwing a punch and doesn't make any sense. And Lieutenant Adams has addressed that, that question that you had, and you asked oh, okay. it several I, different times in different ways. I, I don't feel it satisfactory responded to, but I understand, and yep. I apologize. Uh, I don't have any further questions for okay. Lieutenant Adams. Thank you. Any other witnesses you'd like to call? Uh, no. Right. Oh, I already... It, yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Do you have a closing statement then you'd like to make? Uh, yes, actually I do. And uh, it involves a little bit of a demonstration since that man wanted to lie so openly. Cronus, come here. Come on, Cronus, get up away your bones. That man, his claims of 17 years of experience fly in the face of everything that he said because there are very specific ways to trigger a dog's aggression. And what he described is cartoonish amateur attempts to trigger a dog's aggression, often seen in like movies about like dogs that are aggressive. Like you'll see like a gangster with like a dog and like that's how they'll behave. Cronus, get him, get him, get him, Cronus. Get him, get him, Cronus, get him. Get him. He doesn't know what is going on. He's confused, turning towards me. He didn't bark at you. He didn't look at you. He didn't do anything because that is a ridiculous way to get a dog to, to be aggressive to someone. So to make the statement that that's what I did, as I just demonstrated to you, I would never do that. Because even if my goal was to threaten or intimidate him, as is the obvious implication of what he's saying, then that would be a completely ineffective way of doing it. His description of what I was doing is so off base of how you get a dog to be triggered that it's laughable and it makes me question everything he had to say because if that's how he thinks you trigger a dog then obviously he doesn't have 17 and a half years of professional experience and so how much of everything else he said was a lie again this is all a huge waste of everyone's time you have seen my dogs with the exception of my puppy who couldn't stop you know fidgeting he wasn't being aggressive in any way. He was just fidgeting. But with the exception of my puppy, you have seen Cronus laying around in your council chambers. Have you witnessed a single act of aggression? Have you heard him growl? Have you seen anybody come close to them, have to 
react with fear in any way, shape, or form. I knew that we would spend hours talking in circles, and it all comes down to he said, she said. I don't want to play this game. So I brought my dog in so that everyone in this chamber can see and feel with your own two hands and eyes the danger level of this dog because it is non-existent. This dog is less dangerous than I am and I'm dying of stage four metastatic colon cancer. I don't have the energy to go anywhere or do anything with these dogs. They live in my house and they go to the bathroom in my fenced in yard. That's it. We go nowhere, we interact with no one. And yet I was 100% confident coming in here today that I did not need a prong collar or an electronic collar or a muzzle. I don't need this leash. This dog is as much of a threat to you as that chair. It's only dangerous if you're not looking in the dark and you trip over it. Otherwise, it's not gonna just jump up and bite you. My dog is not going to just jump up and bite you. We heard a lot of lies today. We heard a lot of exaggerated truths today. I don't care what somebody chooses to believe. I understand that these are police officers and that their word carries a lot of weight. I believe that in a society of laws that it should. But I believe that they are human and that they are as fallible as you or I. And I believe that everybody here has made a mistake in judging someone or judging a dog, it happens. I believe the Sheboygan Police Department has either made a series of mistakes or, as will be heard by the Police and Fire Commission, that they are harassing me. And they are simply looking for ways to try and harm me. All of these tickets that he says that I've been found guilty of, I was found guilty by default because I refuse to stand before a judge and fight with these officers in some kind of he said, she said battle. I am not gonna take time out of my treatment. I am not gonna take time while I am sick and throwing up. Perhaps some of you might remember the last time I was here and throwing up. Thankfully, today I I'm doing slightly better, but I am still in pain standing here before you. The tumor on my side tears into my muscles when I am standing like this and it hurts. But I am here today to fight against this designation because it is nonsense. By their own testimony, the Sheboygan Police Department does not have anyone here today with any expertise whatsoever on this subject. They do not have training in animal behavioralism. They do not have training in dog training. They have never rehabilitated an aggressive dog. Their expert witness, Lisa Merrick, has never had formal training, has never rehabilitated an aggressive dog, and openly admitted that she did not know with certainty whether Cronus was dangerous, simply that her and her staff didn't feel comfortable, while admitting that dogs can often be nervous when being ripped away 
from their owners and placed in a shelter, which, by the way, we did not even discuss the fact that that was an illegal seizure of my dog that occurred that day. My wife was driving around with Cronus and their officer told Melissa that she must surrender the dog and that they would follow her to the Humane Society to make sure that she surrendered the dog and that if she didn't, that they were coming with a warrant to seize the dog. They threatened her and coerced her without her free will to surrender that dog and then tried to claim that the dog was surrendered voluntarily and had to turn around and give the dog back because they knew, they knew that they had broken the law, that they had overstepped their bounds and that they were illegally seizing my dog. They have done this over and over again. I brought up briefly before that when they come to my home, when I call them about somebody, you know, making threats to me on my property, when I call them about people possibly breaking into my home, they're more interested in whether or not I have the dog poop picked up in my backyard. I'm sure you guys know people with dogs. And I'm sure you know that not everyone picks up their dog poop the second their dog poops in their yard. When I was still healthy enough to walk my dogs, I had multiple Walmart bags on me at all times. I would never leave my dog feces on the sidewalk out in public. That is terrible. And I would never do that. But in my own yard, when I'm dying of cancer, I mean, I don't just leave it to pile up, but, you know, pick it up every day, every other day. And yeah, that means sometimes there's a few piles out there, especially when I had four or five dogs. You know, but, but when I can't even go outside because I am in such physical pain from the cold, you would think that the Sheboygan Police Department would have an ounce of a heart to understand that I physically could not pick up my dog's feces from my yard, from my yard. And instead, they continued to issue citation after citation to a man on disability. I'm parked in a handicapped space out front right now with my placard up because I am physically disabled. I am having pain standing here before you. I cannot walk through Walmart without becoming exhausted. I am suffering every day. And the police department is more concerned with how they can punish me than with how they can help me or at the very least, just leave me alone. By their own testimony, there hasn't been any incidences since September. We're already into the next calendar year. Prior to that, the one incident that, as far as I'm concerned, is, is, the, is the one thing that is of concern, is the one thing we're not hearing today although they brought it up multiple times, the March 3rd incident with, with uh, Deborah Berry being bitten. That was the one thing that seriously happened and I had to put down my favorite dog as a result of that. And it pains me every day to know that I failed that dog because she did not deserve that. I know that a dog biting someone is a horrible thing. I can't undo that. But I know that that dog was a loving dog that just needed more time. And unfortunately, I ran out of that time. 
and it hurts me because I have never failed a dog before that. In 15 plus years of training dogs, I have never failed to rehabilitate an aggressive dog. There has never been a dog, mean pit bulls at the, at the shelter who wouldn't let anyone put a leash on them and walk them without biting the shelter workers, records of them biting the shelter workers. I came in and rehabilitated that dog. But I wasn't able to do it for that dog. And it hurts. But I did what I had to because I do believe that humans are worth more than dogs. I do believe that the safety of everyone is what's most important. And although I know in my heart that I could have saved that dog, I couldn't do it before she ended up biting someone seriously. And for that, she had to pay the ultimate price. But I did it. And I would do it with these dogs if that is what was needed. Because I will not allow these dogs to be a danger to anyone. I've got people who would gladly come in and testify on my behalf. Some of them you may know. People of standing in this community who have used my services as a trainer, who have met my dogs, they would tell you that I am a good person, a good trainer, and that these are good dogs. But I didn't ask them to come in today because, again, I don't want you to take my word for it. All I ask is that you not rubber stamp theirs that you use your own intelligence and judgment to just come and meet this dog and tell me whether he is dangerous or not. Because if you have the confidence to come and meet a dog that has shown no signs of aggression this entire time that we've been here, you will see that there is not an ounce of danger in this dog. This is an old dog who has maybe three years left. He might have a little more time than me, but right around the same time, me and him are gonna leave this world. And all I want is for him to not have to leave it any earlier than he has to like I do because he is not a danger. If he was, I would be the first one saying, you know what? Yeah, he's a danger. And you don't have to take my word for that because I proved it. I proved it with Persephone. I said, yeah, that bite that Deborah Berry suffered is serious. That was not a little nip. That was not a warning bite. That was an aggressive bite. And I did what had to be done to protect people in the future from her. I would do it again with him if I had to. But why? Why would I put him down when he is literally just laying here, surrounded by men in uniform with weapons who hate me? Mr. Sheldon. You've been speaking now for a little over 20 minutes. I'm so sorry. And you're, you're talking in circles and repeating yourself. Um, I know I have questions for you and I know other committee members might. We've been on this for over three hours now. So just if you want to wrap up your closing that, statement. That was basically okay. what I was getting at was Thank that, you. you know, just please come meet Cronus and tell me that you think he's dangerous. And that's all. Okay, thank you. All right, so just procedurally, Chuck, committee members ask questions and then go into closed session to deliberate and then come back with our decision. Yeah, so 
um, if you if you do have questions of the parties, you can you can ask them. Um, technically, that's sort of part of the testimony portion. Um, so we probably should have done that before the closing statements, but that's that's fine. Okay. That, that important. Uh, and then we would make the determination. Uh, you can go in a closed session to del deliberate if you choose. Um, yeah, so th that would be uh, an option. The other thing that we'll want to do before we completely close the hearing is we're going to want to clarify the exhibits and those kinds of things. But I'll take care of that once you're done. With your okay, sounds good. I'll start off with questions then. Just some real quick ones, Mr. Sheldon. At the beginning of this, you said your dogs were not licensed with the city? Correct. Is, that, is there a reason for that? Because of this ongoing battle with the police department, okay. I have been non-compliant okay. with a lot of their things. It's basically come down to, I believe that I will only get justice through the police and fire commission. And so I have completely given up on trying to resolve this through the court system here in Sheboygan County and will be. Just my question was just in the license. So just because that is a city rule for everybody. I, yep. I agree. And, and then do I have a question about your training certification. Yes, sir. Do you have that present, you said, or no? I, I do not have my training certification present. I can. Uh, dig out my AKC certification for applying the K-9 good citizenship tests okay. and provide that to you guys in a very timely manner. Okay. Any other questions from committee members? This is Donahue, I have no questions, time to move on. I guess I just have one quick. Um, if you felt that uh, Persephone was the, you know, with the, the aggressor in that Deborah Berry incident, and you, know, you agreed to have her put down, why did you have to go through, we had to go through the whole rigmarole of the last time. Um, why didn't you just have her put down then because she did do that aggressive bite? Why do you have to go through the whole, which, which, which dog was it and things like that? Um, the, the, the simple fact of the matter is, Mr. Decker, is that uh, until they took the vicious designation off of Cronus, I didn't know what was going to be happening. And until I knew what was going to be happening, I didn't want to prematurely do something that was not going to help resolve anything. The fact that she needed to be put down was already basically agreed upon, but I had her safely uh, locked up in the house and there was gonna be no further interactions with people. And so I knew that I did not have the um, onus of having to do it like that day because she was going to be kept isolated from the rest of the world until we could get things sorted out. And then once the designation was placed on her and taken off of Cronus, I believe it took me a week to, to get things scheduled. Just another okay. question too for you, unless you have any questions. A couple, one other thing. Um, in the incident with the, uh, the young gentleman that was, that's your, your, the, the renter, okay. Are you denying that that happened? Are you saying that that, that, that he was bit? I'm not denying that he was bit. No, no, sir. I no. am denying that it was Cronus. No, who, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about the 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 the, the, uh, the your current renter, the 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 the, the, bear, the I'm sure what his name was. The 15 year old. Oh, Ladarius. Yes. Uh, um, Ladarius himself says he was never bit. Everyone well, I didn't say he was bit. That he was chased. Oh, you, that you he was chased. It? Yeah, I I I uh, have talked with Ladarius. And uh, what he conveyed to me was that he ran when he saw the dog. Okay. He never, he never said that the dog chased him. He said he saw the dog and ran. So you would not have wanted him to testify then? Is it, 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 I, I don't care if he wanted to testify. In fact, I mean, during, the well, conversation, the during the conversation that I had with him and his mother, I made it extremely clear to them that in no way, shape, or form 
was their tenancy hinged with, with, with this, that they were within their rights to, to disagree, okay. that they did not have to help me at all. Okay, but and I, and I, said, I said, all I want is for, for you guys to, you know, just tell the truth if you, if you go to the hearing. I'm like, that's all I'm asking. If you go to the hearing, just tell the truth. And through the course of our conversation, Deborah Berry became upset and said she just doesn't want to deal with the police at all. That she doesn't want them coming and, and you know, asking all these questions all the time. The police of their own volition had started stopping over just randomly asking her questions about my dogs. Without being called, without being summoned, they were just fishing for anything that they could use against me. And she became so upset by the police constantly being there that through the course of the conversation when I was saying, look, you know, if you guys go to the hearing, just tell the truth, you know, that's all I ask. Okay. And, and they said, you, we don't even, we don't, we don't want anything to do with this. I said, would you be willing to sign a statement to that effect? Um, and, and both her and Ladarius said yes. Okay. And I said, would it be okay? That answers that question. Oh, okay, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. That's all. I, I just want straight answers. I don't want, uh, uh, we, we don't, uh, my I, other question. I apologize is, for my verbosity. Okay. I, okay. Uh, and the other question I would have is, is um, the, the, the gentleman had pictures of your dogs like, running loose uh, in, in the neighborhood. How often does this happen? And has this happened uh, quite a bit? As, as I mean, far. you have let those dogs out in, in the past or is this, this you know. Uh, as far as I knew, the dogs had only been loose once or twice, and that was prior to me building the fence. In fact, that's what got me to finish the fence was the possibility that the dog was out of the yard. I don't know that the dog was out of the yard. I do know that Ladarius, as far as he told me, ran from the dog but was never chased by it. You know, and, and the dog, as far as I saw, on that date, had stayed in the yard on that date. That's what I saw. As far as the picture goes, the picture clearly shows my dog not in the yard. I don't know exactly what the time frame of that is. I cannot say with certainty when that occurred, Well, regardless, the, the point is that I freely admit that it is possible that my dogs may have gotten out before the fence went up, but now that the fence is up, they have never. When did you construct the fence? When was the, when was the fence completed? Uh, right around that, that day. Was that a permitted fence? Was that a what? Is that, is that a permitted fence? Is it permitted? Did you get a permit with the city? And... A, a, a permit with the city? Yes. You're, you're is aware it a of permanent it. fence? Like oh, a permanent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's got the four by four sunk yes. in. Yeah. Um, uh, did you get a permit to build that fence? I, I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't know that I needed a permit to put up a fence. I, yes, I guess maybe I might have some paperwork to fill out question. somewhere or something. That's all. I guess. It, and, that's all I have. Uh, next question for me is: So we had eight, seven witnesses here today, neighbors of yours, correct? Uh, well, there was two neighbors. Okay. Yeah. And then there was the manager of the Humane Society. And that older gentleman who was... Oh, oh three neighbors. Yeah. Three neighbors. Okay. So, so we, we had a couple witnesses here today. Why, why do you think they all came here to testify? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious because clearly, you know, they, they, they waited about two hours to give their testimony, you know, and shared their concern about their fear about moving out from your dogs, how you handled your dogs. Um, you know, your current neighbors Mr. here. Chair? Yes? Uh, if I could just interrupt. Um, I think we're getting into wild speculation. I think the parties have had more than okay. adequate time to set out their positions. I think if committee members have questions, they need to be extremely focused. Fact inquiries, not asking for speculation. 
quite frankly, I think the time has come to move on. All right. With that, we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Mr. Sheldon, then. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, would either of you care to come and meet my dog, please? I'm not going to do that. I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not Again, worried. this is not relevant yep. to yes. what we are talking about here today. Yes. We need to move on. Well, I do believe that if someone was able to come and interact with my dog with and, their... And we're opting not to. We, we appreciate the I, opportunity, I, though. No, I... So, so procedurally, um, if, if there's session. a motion to go into closed session, I'll accept one. I'll... Before we do that, we need to clarify the exhibit so that we know what we're, what we're dealing with. All right. Let, let me just ask this. What, what I've taken note of uh, was the uh, appeal, the two notices finding the uh, dog to be uh, one to be vicious, one to be uh, dangerous, uh, four photographs uh, of the dogs, which were marked as exhibit six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, the video uh, of the LHPS hearing, which is marked as 10. The video of the apartment at 1026 Swift. Uh, the police camera video, which was 11. 12 and 13 are citations. 14 is a quarantine form. 15 appears to have maybe been a photo of a jacket. And then 16, quarantine information again regarding Cronus. Uh, although that wasn't entirely clear to me. 17 and 18 appear to be the injuries uh, suffered by Orada. 19, the citation issued regarding Orada. Uh, and then 21, and I'll get to 20 in a moment, is a photograph of Odysseus um, running loose. Um, 20 appears to be the exhibit that um, Mr. Shelton uh, provided, which was the letter from um, the, his tenants uh, that he typed. Um, so, uh, Lieutenant Adams, did, did I get all of your exhibits correct, uh, first of all, or were there others that I missed? There's two that I think maybe, or sorry, there's a handful of citations that I think weren't entered while I was standing over there that were referenced, which is two animal at large citations and four uh, dangerous vicious dog citations, which are the failure to comply with the dangerous dog ordinance. And you'd like those also entered as exhibits? Yes, please. And then, Mr. Shelton, you wanted number 20 as, as your exhibit, which was the letter uh, from um, your tenant? As well as the videos of Officer Hubrix interacting with, uh, with my dogs, as well as the text message from Demetria Berry confirming that she did not want to come to the court date today and, uh, you know, just verifying. Have those been entered? Uh, I need to enter them. Okay, so do you, do you have, if you would hand them to... Uh, uh, I need to make a copy of the videos. I, I unfortunately do not have copies of the videos, but I can, I can get those. Did, did, were the videos shown as part of the testimony? I don't recall that, that no, they any, were not. Mr. Shelton showed any videos. Yes, I did. Where, where, how, how were they, how were they um, he, shown to the elders who were not present? They were not. They were not shown to the elders not present, but he did show us on his, on his tablet. I mean, I get, that'll be up to you as a committee whether you want to accept that, but uh, our, our council rules do require that if you're going to have an exhibit, it's got to be visible uh, to those participating in the meeting. What was I, the content of those it is, it is, that were not shown to those of us? It, it is Officer Hubrix uh, interacting with my dogs, and during the cross testimony, he did in fact confirm that that was him interacting with my dogs. I have no objection to the uh, entry of those exhibits. Not hearing any objection from anyone else, we'll accept those. I think what we'll do is we'll probably come back with some instructions on how you can get them, uh, uh, get the copies uh, directly to the, uh, uh, the committee in the next few days. Thank you, Mr. Adams.
So any objection to each of and to any of the uh, exhibits, either by Mr. Shelton to this to the police department's exhibits or by uh, uh, the police department to Mr. Shelton's exhibit. None from Donahue. Nope. Cool. None from Ackley. None from the parties none. either. Nope. Sounds like none. So I think we'll we'll consider those all to be exhibits, and and we'll we'll deal with that once we go into closed session. So that now is the time to make the uh, motion to go into closed session. Motion. Would you like me to leave these with no. you guys for the closed session? No. 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 Motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in subsection 19.85, subsection 1A of the Wisconsin statute for the purpose of deliberation concerning the action to be taken regarding the appeal of Chad Shelton. Second, Ackley. Okay, there's been a motion to go into closed session and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of convening into closed session, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Need an individual vote, Ryan. All right. Yeah, good call, Memory Lynn. All right. Decker. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Ackley. Aye. Feldy. Aye. Sorensen votes aye. We're in closed session. So you're going to have to leave okay. the room. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure that, that the. Um, that they the that we're off the air. Yeah, it looks like we're off the air. Council, anything. This is the longest meeting I've been in uh, ever. <laughs> the golf course was a little longer, I think. <clears throat> Well, this is almost four hours. We'll, yeah, we'll, be, ever, we'll be over four. <clears throat> hey, we still got other things on the agenda after this. Yes. Does he want to listen to it or? All right, we are back in open session, and we'll go on to item 6.1, possible action regarding appeal of Chad, Chad Shelton. Shelton. Um, City Attorney? So, Mr. Shelton, uh, we would just ask that uh, you provide the uh, physical copies of the documents that you wanted as exhibits. Um, we, they were accepted as exhibits, but we should get physical copies of that. Um, you can do that if, if, you, if they're electronic, that's perfectly fine. If you want to email them um, to the city attorney's office, that's fine. Uh, or you can um, mail them uh, to the city attorney's office as well. Um, or you can drop them off, but our office is actually not open to the public right now. So it's probably the best would be to um, mail them or to email them. Um, I can provide you, uh, if you would prefer one method or the other, I can provide you either one of those. Just let me know, um, and we can do that right now if, if you have a preference. Yeah. He said email. Okay, so um, my email, uh, I'll just have you direct it to me. It's charles.adams at sheboyganwi.gov. And um, that is also it is on the web on the city's website if if you uh, um, if you lose that so. And that's that's all I've got. Then any motion should be made by the by a member of the committee. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Alder Donahue. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, after due consideration of the extensive testimony that was presented at our hearing today, I move that 
Um, uh, the committee upholds uh, both of the determinations of the Sheboygan Police Department, finding that Cronus is a vicious dog as defined uh, in uh, the municipal code and that Persephone is a dangerous dog as defined in the it's not municipal Persephone. code. It's not Odysseus, not Persephone. Odysseus, Odysseus, Odysseus. I'm sorry, Odysseus. My apologies. All right, there's been a motion and a second. Is there a second? Second. All right, there's been a motion second. Any further, any further discussion from committee members? Seeing none, all those in I favor, think probably please, roll call. please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chairman votes aye. That's upheld. All right, moving along. Item 7.1, RO number 98, 2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2022. Change of premise application for 3381. This is the Meyer store, and once again, we're holding it at Meyer's request. Motion to hold. Second. Um, I, this is bullshit. What, 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 first you were about to give me something about who I contact about this? I believe they will give you notice from the official notice. This isn't going to stand. What did Odysseus do with Captain, you know, look how dangerous is he? They made a ruling. I don't say right now. Let's go. Come on. All right. There's been a motion and a second to hold. Any further discussion on holding this item? See I have a question. Oh, Barb, go for it. Sure. Um, uh, how long is this the same as like the beverage license that we can hold it until um, the current license expires? I mean, how far can we keep pushing this one out? Honestly, this one could probably be held even beyond that because all it is is changing premises. Um, it, it just. I, I, Julie has been working with them, and I think they they've had other things that are more important going on, and 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 they they basically said they're they're because they can do the the sales of everything other than alcohol, and that's their primary concern. This has been kind of a low priority. Um, they'll they, they'll fix it. All right, thank you. <laughs> what, what, what's the, what's the premise change? It, it is where it is. I, I don't understand. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It's to allow delivery, so when you pull up in your car, oh. you, know, you can order oh. groceries. Oh, okay. It's to allow alcohol, so they have to include the, that area in the premises. That, that's all, and, and they just haven't they haven't done that clearly. That okay. They'll take care of it. Okay. 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 Trying to help. Now I now I get it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That is held again. 7.2 RO number 117-2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2021 and June 30th, 2022. This was the RO where most of them were held from last time. And uh, so a couple, uh, some, I'll just let you know, Thomas Bogart Jr. has withdrawn his license application, so you will not need to act on that other than to file. Um, we are re we're recommending that you hold the taxi cab driver's license of Darren L. Felton, and then we're recommending granting the remainder of the license. Is there a motion to approve staff's recommendations on that item? Motion to approve by staff recommendation. All right. Second. There's been a motion to multiple Oops. seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 7.3, RO number 120-2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2021 and June 30th, 2022. So in this case, we are recommending uh, holding the massage, massage establishment license entourage salon and spa pending completion of their application. Uh, oh, and actually I, that has now come, that, that was taken care of today. So you don't need to hold that one. Sorry about that. 
Um, we are recommending granting Kristen Hilbling's taxi cab driver's license renewal with a warning to follow the law while driving taxi cab. She did receive a warning and a citation for two separate incidents of traffic violations while driving uh, just in the last four months. Uh, so, uh, but that's a grant with uh, a warning and all other licenses on the application can be granted. Motion, is there a motion, motion to, to approve by staff, by staff recommendations? All right. There's been a motion to second. There's been a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting staff for, staff's recommendation on that, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Aye. Next, next meeting, January 27th. No, we've met enough. We don't have to meet for February. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we did all our meetings worth. This is just the first. These are how all the meetings are going to go the rest of the year. All right. Is there a motion, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, no. Is there a second? <laughs> There's been a motion in multiple seconds. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 8.05. Aye.